can only fit two. You were everywhere though too. Alicia White, is that right? Okay, good. Can I do you two? Alright. <laughs> Cool. So they're, they're, they're talking right now with the translator and the girl. Great game. A lot of fun to watch, huh? Did you throw or catch the game in the final? Really hard to tell up in the booth, I just got to say. I know you and I can see you, but the, these, these numbers, because of the way they're designed, it's just really hard. So, okay, good, good, good. We'll probably make it up. Hello, I'm Miho. I'm in Praha WCC 2010. And I'm here with um, Aimi Sogabe from Team Uno. And I, I, I'm going to ask her how did you feel after this big game? She was so disappointed to lose this game because she was um, trying to practice for this WCC. So she was disappointed to lose this game. Um, the next question on how how did you, how did you feel to, yeah, to give a shout out play to with people. play against Fury? Fury to fight with me. How how did you feel? Fury was very fast and the ball was high. It was very difficult to stop. It was very difficult to stop. It was very difficult to stop. It was very difficult Fury is strong and powerful team and they have a uh, height tall they are tall and it's hard for Uno to stop them and it's deserved to get this get the gold medal she think the, the next question is the last question um, and to please uh, make some message to the fans, wow. UNO fans and families and friends. と日本の家族やファンのみんなに一言メッセージをお願いします。と、UNO おかげでもあるので、本当に皆さんに感謝しています。ありがとうございました。she was, she was so glad to um, support uh, for, the, for the Japanese fan and Japanese fan to thank you. <laughs> thank you all of them to support UNO, she said. Yeah, it's fun so, to watch. It's really, really Thank cute. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, waiting for uh, waiting for the okay here. They'll line us up, we're all tall. The last, the last was the Japanese, and then here we've got a couple of really ginormous Americans. Okay, uh, I'm here with Alicia White and Manu Argili from the champion, world champion Fury. Alicia, Manu, you guys scored a lot of points for the team. I want to say more than half. Um, it seemed like you guys were everywhere around the field. How did it feel out there running? Did you feel good running out there? Uh, yeah, we felt really good. We have a, a good, strong, deep team. So our, our sort of slogan throughout this whole tournament has been 26 strong. So we've had a good rotation. So I think all of the team felt, felt uh, pretty fresh going into this game. Tell me about their defense, Alicia. They were really like every time you looked into the throwing lane or were like a step behind on your throws, they were there. Yeah, they're really quick and they play the space really well. Like they, we have to work for everything out there. They're a great team. Manu, at the end of the game, you made a couple of big plays. You got a defense, and then you sent that disc to Shmi for a big goal. How did that feel? Did you, how did that feel when you released it? Did you know that was going to be a pretty straight shot? Yeah, I think I had, um, yeah, I had a sense that we were going to be a score, and uh, that's my um, role on the team to like be a, um, the cutter that also hocks it deep. So we had practice. Okay, so that bit in your role. Manu, also I noticed, and Alicia, you as well, um, uh, Manu, I didn't see you much in the first half. In the second half, you didn't get off the field. You stayed the entire time. They kept you out there for a lot of points on O and D. You know, were your legs still fresh out yeah, there? I, yeah, feeling good, yeah. Because as Alicia said, there, there was 26 of us, and um, yeah, everybody got to play uh, every game, so... Everybody felt like they had a lot of legs left. Okay, great. Because it did look like you were tired. Both teams looked like they were a little tired, but you guys got the big Ds at the end and pulled it out. Um, let me ask you, Alicia, at any point in the game towards the end there, and it was getting really close, universe point, Uno was up the break on you guys. Did you feel nervous? Uh, well, there's always sort of a sense of nerves, but it's just how you use that. Um, so we, we knew that each team could only score one point at a time, and we were just going for that one point each time we were out there. Okay, guys, congratulations on winning World Ultimate Club Championships 2010. Well done. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>
an amazing game. So the expectations have been set for, for quite an exciting open game. Today we have two American teams, actually both from the west coast of the United States, Sakai and Revolver, and sitting next to me is Tony Leonardo, uh, coming online momentarily. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I was just talking to Ben Wiggins, Bren, before this game. Ben and, Wiggins, uh, the captain of uh, Sakai. One of the captains of Sakai, and um, you know, I got a, you know, a lot of information from him. But one, you know, one thing just in relationship to this game is that, uh, uh, you know, he said this, and you, you hear this a lot from these guys, uh, especially on the West Coast these days. Just like, yeah, it seems like whatever tournament we're in, we play these guys. So, so this is the fourth time this year they ran across each other. Um, they're very familiar with each other. They played each other in pool play. They played each other at UPAs. Revolver knocked out Sakai in UPA, so they're, they're, they've been around the block. You know? We got Blockstack TV guys with us. Tom, say hi. Lean in there. This is Tom, Tom from Blackstack. You can look, look at the camera over here. These guys are doing the Ulti Village vi video, so make sure you check those out. The Ulti we'll Village. UltiVillage.com. UltiVillage.com. Blockstack.tv is another one for you to watch more of this exciting uh, event and all its spectacularity. B L O C K S E O S. We should pull up that mic here. Let's let's interview yeah. Tom while he's going to interview us. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, it's going great, Tom. How about yourself? We're trying to find out some details on Revolver and, and, and talk about soccer here. What do you got yeah, going I've been on? Chatting with the guys from Revolver, they look like a hot team. Um, very very competitive. Got some huge uh, O-line athletes. Uh huh. Um, I, I think we're going to see a very, very steady game from their, from their O-line. Yeah. It's, it's all about the D in this one, I think. Let me ask you this. Did you, um, did you see Bo Kittredge and Mac Taylor making a lot of plays? Because uh, their numbers were really low on the stat sheet. Uh, I, I've, to be honest, I've, not, I've only seen a, a, cu a couple of their games uh -huh. and um, not noticed those guys in particularly lightning form. I was just chatting to the team, mm -hmm. and they were expecting big things from them in the final year. Big name players, big game. Did they mention that, Bo and Mac then? Uh, definitely Bo, and uh -huh. uh, I think Mac to a lesser extent. Okay. But what about a women's game, hey? What about that women's final? Tremendous women's final. We were just thrilled. I mean, it was the emotions that we had yeah. two, the two Japanese women with us that were friends of the UNO team that uh, uh, Sankyo and, and Miho did a great job for us, and they were visibly upset by that loss. It was a tough loss for UNO. Yeah, totally. I mean, myself and Steve were just on the edge of our seats throughout the... Hey, listen, I tell you, Manu Argili. I mean, we knew she was going to do that. I've seen her do it at Paga. You've seen her do it at yeah, Paga? Yeah, yeah, She got a couple big Ds. She ripped that disc to Shmi Long. Yeah. She was all over the place at the end of the, at the, end of the game there. Yeah. And that's, 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 a, that's a big time player right there. But both those teams, you know, they, in the middle of that game, it was hot. They both made, made, made the mistakes under pressure, and there was there was a couple of points where, if you weren't horizontal, you weren't on the end of a disc because the opponent was going to beat you there. Yeah, which is crazy because you, you got to figure like if you're horizontal and an American, you, you know those girls at least you got another three four inches. But uh, no, <laughs> the uh, Uno was getting to those discs. Yes, uh, I mean they were just so fast and Their hot acceleration is phenomenal. So some of the um, some of the, the when the when the O was really uh, flowing nicely. The amount of space they put the disc up into. Yeah. Just, uh, they will throw it well over there, 30 meters away from anybody else, and we'll just chase it down, and that's fine. You guys are broadcasting live over there like we are doing. Well, how did you feel? It looked like Bryn and I were thinking they were, both teams were looking pretty uh, pretty tired towards the end there, some dead legs. Uh, perhaps, yeah. I mean, the, the um, both both teams had, um, well, the, the uh, brute... Uh, See, I've, I've, the emotion's getting to me. <laughs> the American Team Fury had a much bigger squad, but they didn't play them all. So, uh, the, you know, the Japanese had 16 players, and they were using all 16. Yes. I, I guess uh, towards the end of that game, Fury had used six, probably 16 of their team. They, there was a lot of guys that didn't get any pitch time or maybe one or two points. Very interesting, yeah. They told me after the game that they were a team of 26 strong, but they, yeah, they, they were they, definitely, definitely tight they, rotations. Yeah, shortened the lines a lot. Uh, Manu they, stayed the last eight. Alicia was on there all the time. Alicia Shmi White stayed the there. last six. Yeah, yeah Alicia White. There's um, a lot of Alicia's on the team. Uh, Snyder was, was Yeah, there Alex the, pulled every the pull. Time. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's some, some big players. Uh, and, you know, a game like that, it's hot. They're going to get tired. Uh, I think we, we were privileged to see a game of such high quality at this stage in the tournament. You know, some, it's quite often you get to the end of a tournament, it's a week long, everyone's tired. 
and you get a sort of a lackluster game. That was anything but. That was a real classy number. Wow, that was know, great. Privileged to see it. And all the right calls are made. We saw a lot of like calls, contested calls, and we saw the replays here. And you know, nine times out of ten, there the right call was, was the right decision yeah, to come I mean, to. Compared with some of the games I've seen this week, there was barely any calls. Yeah. There. And, and yeah. the ones that, that there were, they were resolved um, fairly quickly. It was nice to have the the guys on the on the sideline as well, just uh, letting us know what the call is on pitch with the with the hand signals. I've, I've, that's the first time I've seen that, and I found it very useful. We didn't even notice that. We need to find that actually. Hey. Bryn, if you go outside, find out what... Hey, tell us what the hand signals are, actually, while we're live on air here. Uh, so, so you've got um, a big V in the air. Uh-huh. That's a violation. Okay. Uh, a cross with your hands. Okay. That's foul. Okay. And then uh, if you pull your... If you interlink your fingers that's and pull your arms apart, Yeah. Uh, that's that's a contested... No, put, interlink your fingers. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, one hand up, one hand down. <laughs> okay. Try again. So turn one hand facing face up, one one palm face down. One, yeah. Okay. And towards each other, facing towards each other. Your palms facing. <laughs> okay. One palm <laughs> face the floor. One palm face the ceiling. I wish you were, the camera was on us to see one, this. One palm face the face, face the ceiling. Other way. Other way. Turn the other way. Okay. Other way. Keep going. No, okay. All right. Now interlink your fingers and pull them away yeah. from each other. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay, I have to do this myself. <laughs> yeah, it looks like that. Oh. Yeah, that's hard to describe. Right now, so oh, go right. ahead. So you're trying to. So this that, is a. That is contest, that's a contest. That's a contested. Contested and then foul. Your arms down. This is a foul. Flat down by your sides. Your arms. Flat down by your sides. That's uh, uncontested. Uncontested. Okay. Contested foul. Yeah, and then. Okay. Uh, arms at your sides at right angles. Uh huh. This. That that, that is a, a pick. A pick call. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, timeout is obviously. Timeout. timeout. What about a goal? Timeout would be this. Yeah. Um, this is a. I think I. Goal. I'm a little too. <laughs> yeah, left hand towards the end zone, right arm, uh, right angle. So. Okay. So and this yeah. is you said this was a pick, correct? That's a pick. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so it, it's, it's quite nice to. There's a guy on the on the sideline. Come around. Um, the guy on the sideline doing all the um, doing all the calls. It's Plus, Roman was doing all the calls uh, yeah. and just you know relaying what was happening on the pitch and. I thought it was very useful for the crowd once we'd understood what the hand signals meant. A very, very useful thing to have. It's hot in here, Tony. Uh, it's hot out there. You know there, who that is? That's my teammate, Utsav Sherman, <laughs> and his little girl. <laughs> his little girl, Andy, playing in the sand there. <laughs> that was pretty fun to see. Oni is actually his little girl. So, Tom, uh, what have people been talking? Uh, what's the scuttle outside there about this game? You know, Revolver, uh, I, Sockeye, what are yeah, people like? What are the I, fans like? I've not really spoken to that many people. We've been uh, just, just down on the this, on this, this side just interviewing the uh, Fury guys. Uh, but I I think um, is, is see Sockeye have, have had to regroup over the last couple of years. It? A lot of the players that they were known for have left the club. Can you feel it? It's a different Sockeye we're seeing now. They've had a bit of a, an up and down journey to this final. But, you know, do they want it? Do they want it enough? I think we're going to see a very disciplined game from Revolver. We're going to see a lot of flair from uh, a lot of flair from Sockeye. We were chatting earlier in the week um, about the ways to play ultimate at this level, and uh, it's, a, it's a risky game. You can play your game safe. You can play 30% passes and make sure you know, you, or you know, complete. 80% passes, every pass is at least 80%. And if you complete them all, you're going to be a nice, safe team, you're going to score a lot of points. Um, or you can throw some 30% passes. Yeah. And if they come off, high risk, you're high going to win games. Yeah. So I think that's what, that might be the difference between the two teams. Uh, I'm expecting a revolver to be within themselves, so uh -huh. solid. Okay. And Sokai to be the team that maybe uh, man for man don't quite have it. Uh -huh. They're going to throw higher risk stuff. Uh -huh. More flair, bigger okay. grabs. Um, that's just how I, I, how I feel this soccer team are going to have to play to beat the ball. I'm off to do a bit of uh, commentary for Ulti Village and uh, for Blockstack TV. And I'll catch you, Tony, later. All right, Tom, thanks for stopping by. Pleasure to have you. Good luck out there. By the way, did you guys want to ask me something? 
Oh, yeah, 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 right on. Yeah, yeah keep that door open for now. Yeah, we got to keep that fucking door open. No, open, 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 open. Using Sockeye team. Now Revolver is running out. Uh, calling out all the teams there. Big teams, big, big, deep teams. So it takes a little bit of time. I don't know if you heard all of the uh, the call there on the players, but here we're going to call them out. So here's Sockeye's roster. Uh, Jamie Idaho is his nickname. Arambula, number 44. Frank Barrich, number 25. Dave Beestock, number 21. Michael Caldwell, he's been with the team for three years. Uh, one of the longest members of the team, I'm sorry, for about five, six years, number 20. Nathan Castine, uh, Ben Wiggins before the game was telling me he's a hot and cold guy. He can make a lot of big plays for them. Uh, that's number 15, Nathan Castine. Uh, Charlie Ellis, number 18, came out of uh, playing for Shazam. Eddie Feely, number 33. Andrew Fleming, who is also one of the core members of this team, been around for a long time. Andrew Fleming, number 23, made the huge impossible layout grab to, to salt away the game against Ironside two days ago in quarters. Sam Harkness, number 9. Adam Holt, number 40, Ben was telling me, who is going to be a pretty big uh, handler for them. Ray Illion, number 99. Tyler Kinney, number 11. Matthew Knowles, number 7. We're looking at Revolver right now, but uh, we'll get to the Revolver in a second here. Um, Allie Lennon, number 4. Mauricio Moore, number 3. Phil Murray, number 6. Moses Rifkin, number 10, uh, who is playing after a microfracture in his foot. Bailey Russell, number eight, just moved out to the West Coast. Joe Sefton, number 24. Uh, Matt Sewell, Skippy, they call him, number 13, is going to be all over the disc. Aaron Talbot, number two. Spencer Wallace, 22. Ben Wiggins, 12. Here we're looking at Revolver. There's number 50, Bo Kittredge, you saw for right there. We'll read off the roster again. Rocky Beach, he comes out of playing Beach Ultimate, actually. Started playing Beach Ultimate before playing Grass Ultimate. Number five, Jit Batarache, uh Pronouncing that wrong, I apologize, Jit. Came out of Stanford, number 17. Robbie Cahill, big Stanford player again, number 10. Taylor Caschino is one of these guys on this team that actually has a championship. This team hasn't won UPA Nationals. Uh, but Taylor Caschino did twice with the uh, Santa Barbara Condors. Nick Chapman, number 12. Marty Conkeren, number 28. Uh, Brian Garcia, number 1. Alice Gasquier, number 24. Tyler Grant, number 13. I think he comes out of UW, Wisconsin. Joshua Greenow, an Oregon player, number 99. Uh, Eric Halverson, number 8. Nick Handler, number 11. I believe he is a UCSB player or Stanford player. Jonathan Hester, number 37. Ashlyn Joy, number 27. Rio Kawakawa, 19. Bo Kittredge, number 50, we talked about, out of Colorado. He came with his buddy Mac Taylor, number 40. Those two guys uh, look for Bo up in the air. He's got some of the biggest ups in the game. Um, and uh, big-time player. Jonathan Levy, number four. Mike Payne. Mike Payne used to be uh, the president of the board for the UP. I think he still might be. Uh, he's been in San Francisco forever. He's, he's definitely the, the, the guiding light of this team. He put this team together, I think. Um, number 23, Mike Payne. Cassidy Rasmussen, number nine. Joe Schlocklet, number 15. Nick Schlag, 20. 
Mark Sherwood, number 14, really fast, that guy. Played against him in Summer League. Mac Taylor, number 40. Bart Watson's been at the big stage. Number 29, one with Team USA Worlds a number of times, I believe. Josh Weissman, six, and Russell Wynn, number seven. Okay, Bryn, there we go. The whole lineup I down the line. Say, uh, uh, my Caldwell was a freshman on my floor, and I was a senior at Carleton. No, oh, really? So Another uh, Carleton-Seattle connection? Who he, knew? He was very uh, talented from when he first started playing, and obviously several championships on I mean I don't know how many at this point so but guys nice the, to see him here the first thing we know of course is that this is a rematch of pool play and a rematch of a thousand other tournaments these guys have played together can't say that many because this is only revolvers third year maybe fourth fifth, fifth year fifth year it's kind of surprising actually I know they made it that far but um, uh, they played each other a lot this is San Francisco versus uh, there's versus the pole. San, versus uh, Seattle it's uh, 30 degrees here Celsius, 86 Fahrenheit, but hotter than that in the sun. A little bit of breeze, but not too much. And what there is is, a, is uh, with the disc right now. Just put up deep at the first. Nice catch. With a nice mohawk, too. That's Caldwell, number 20. You know. Oh, he lifts up a floaty, blady hammer that's uh, forehand that's going to work. Did he toe the line? I think he did. I think he made a good play on that. I, have to I think that's Fleming. Sorry, different Mike Caldwell I was talking about earlier. Uh, you're fired, Bryn. You can just walk out of the booth right now. <laughs> <laughs> and get get us a beer. No, I'm just kidding. So, um, yes, look, there it is. You're not gonna you're not gonna have this. Yes. Enjoy. <laughs> All right. Um, the uh, earlier game that they had was was actually shortened due to lightning. Revolver won it 13 10 this was on tuesday early afternoon i know that sakai was very unhappy to have the game called before it was finished the way they wanted to but it, it was definitely a win by by revolver it's pretty pretty intense it was extremely intense rain and it was it was not a question it was really coming down for for well, i don't know half an hour an hour that day uh enough that they had to call a lot of the games uh because the fields were soaked and uh, shorten the games and put them in in the next day. So Sakai looking to to for a different result today. Second pull of the day, no turnovers, and just uh. curves out of bounds. The okay, number ten for uh, Revolver coming to pick it up. That's Robbie Cahill. Yeah, he's going to be around the disc a lot. Stanford handler. He's uh he's a pro. This guy. Um, he was top five Callahan um, votes for quite a while. Now, Revolver Brin's an interesting team to me. Um, you know, a lot of people know that two years ago, the San Francisco team broke through and finally won nationals for the first time in a long time. And, uh, and that was a jam. <laughs> and that was a, another San Francisco area team, not Revolver, and they don't share players, which is uh, actually quite surprising. And there's a quick score, a lot of speed. Look at that speed down the field by Revolver. I understand that one of the adjustments that Revolver has been has been adjusting to has been uh, inc in, uh, including some of those some of those jam players. Uh, I don't. S there's maybe two. I think there's. <laughs> a, well, I think uh, they may be important ones. Who are they? That was just what. Uh, I can't. See, I don't. See, I don't recognize anyone on in this roster that was on jam. To be honest with you. Um, uh, maybe he was speaking. Maybe they didn't come. I don't see anyone on here. I could be wrong. Maybe Chapman was on jam? No, I don't see any jam players here. I don't think Bo played with jam. Oh, you know what? I think they're getting big Jim Shetler for the fall. But he's it. not here now. That might That's the only thing I could think of. Talking to one of the captains, Mike Payne, yesterday, he was saying that they have one of the major focuses for them in preparing for this tournament was pre also preparing for nationals in the U.S., Preparing for a double peak is is yeah. He just said that's quite challenging. Yeah, yeah. So they they said it's very unusual for a team to win both U.S. nationals and worlds, if almost impossible. And so, but they're trying to do it this year. All right, Mac Taylor with the pool looks like Wiggins maybe, with the glasses was on the receiving end of that. 
Here's uh, Caldwell going deep. They're going to send it to him. Look at that inside out backhand. It's going to go a little too far, though. You know, he's going to check it out. It's a beautiful throw. Great catch. That was a nice float on that. I got to say, you put a lot of touch on that throw. I thought it was going to go too far, but that looked beautiful. I didn't get to see who threw that. I don't know if you saw, Bren. Um, I did not see. We'll see. Let's get to see. see here. I think he's got the red hat. Yeah. Okay. Aaron Taylor. Uh, you're saying Taylor. Aaron Talbot, number two. Aaron Talbot, number two with the throw. Beautiful throw. Just a beautiful little. You know, you got you to gotta throw across the body on that because he's not throwing an outside in. And he wasn't quite throwing it inside out. He, was, he had to get his wrist up high and then snap it on the top over the defender um, because the mark was sort of that direction. Um, anyway, great throw. Sails it nicely for Caldwell. Play call off the stack. You notice he cut in from a one spot in the vertical stack and then rolled out deep right away. I'm going to recorrect myself. That is the Mike Caldwell I know. He's just gotten a, a little bit uh, more muscly since the last time I saw him. <laughs> wow, he really... Uh, Muscled he, up, huh? He ran, uh, that was uh, half the field in that sprint there. 44, that's Idaho, you see right there. Uh, number four, that's uh, Ali Lennon. I think with the pool was number 15, Nate Castine. And looks like it goes out of bounds. It's 2-1 Sakai. Everything is on serve. Looks like Revolver is setting up for a horizontal offense. Maybe a little bit of a U, putting them toward the side. No, no. It looks pretty straight towards. Looks like a horizontal offense. That uh, that brick mark is a good third of the field, so pulling it out of bounds really hurts. Really hurts the defense. Looks like a. Yeah, is that their second uh, pull out of bounds? It, uh, it's the second of the game. Okay, uh, if Revolver wants to work it under. Look at the speed on both sides here. So, uh, so one thing I wanted to, here's, you see number 50, you know, you don't see him in your picture right now, but number 50, Bo Kittredge, he's out there in the flat, uh, guarded by, uh, who's the guy with the, the yellow, green, there he is, see number 50 right there, Bo Kittredge, everyone knows this guy gets up in the air, he's a big factor, now in use in the finals and nationals this past year against Chain Lightning, it looked like they concentrated too much on jacking it deep to, to Mac and Bo Kittredge. And even though those guys are the superior athletes in the air, um, they lost that game. They just went up too many times to the well there. Ooh, here's an open guy down deep. Nobody holsters it. So uh, we got a little bit of a call there. So let's see. Uh, with the disc is number one for Revolver. That's Brian Garcia with the disc. Let's see what he's going to do. He's going to find bow under. They're going to give bow under all day if they want. Honestly, if they want to get they want to get burned deep. Of course, here's an opportunity for them to burn it deep. But no, Garcia being patient, being very patient. Another call. Um, it's not exactly chippy. It's just that there's a lot of a lot of uh, trying to get positioning and find out uh, the proper stacks on the field and where the movement is here. Not defense, not giving them. Okay, no. Uh, his defense is pushing pretty hard, but they, they're swinging it without too much trouble. Just hard, having a little bit of difficulty moving it down the field. Another call. So back to Cahill. No, is that right? Is that Cahill? Number 10? See. Yeah, I believe that's Cahill. New message, Facebook. Looks like they're running a cut toward the line. But it's really, uh, this game, the, the men's game, the open game moves so quickly. Yeah, it's, bring it's back hard, the women. It's, it's hard to see what's, uh, what's happening in terms of the structure on the field. A little give and goes there. Uh, no call, that there might have been one if they wanted to be. Swing around. Good, good with D, the not, there's the throw forward and oh, the score. There's the score. That's Garcia to Cassidy Rasmussen. I don't recognize all of these names. Uh, you know, there's a lot of ultimate in the Bay Area. You got UC San, uh, UC, uh, UCSD. Um, you got UC Berkeley. You got Stanford. Um, Get a little replay of that little give and give go. And go. That's Bo. A little touch there. Robbie. Doesn't 
doesn't phase him. And he'll throw a swing around the back and the forehand to the line and a little little high backhand for the score. There's Josh Greenow, number 99. He's been helping out the EPA for a long time. He's been involved in Ultimate for forever in, uh, in Oregon there. I think he first started running uh, Junior Worlds 2002. No, not Junior Worlds. Junior National Championships. The um, Revolver, you were talking about the youth or the new players on Revolver, I think, a second ago. There's yeah. There's a lot of the uh, one that's one of their founding principles is to give a place for, for younger players to play elite ultimate in the bay from uh, younger players from the bay area that's what mike Payne was saying yesterday uh there's an article in today's disquito which is the newsletter for those of you who are not here which is probably most of you listening online you can go to wucc2010.com and find a lot of articles uh from the printed newsletter and more where is that newsletter this is at this landed in and rolled out And they're taking it at the corner there, where it rolled out. Hard D there on the back of the field. Looks like more of a horizontal stack. Deep possibilities. Two people going deep. Caldwell coming back, though. Another deep possibility, and it's up. Looks like it's going to float. It's going to be a jumping contest. And Good positioning there by Revolver. Exactly. Remember, uh, <laughs> Sherwood, that dude, okay, yeah, he's fast. <laughs> One of the fastest guys in the field, if not the fastest guy in the field, is Mark Sherwood. He didn't need it in that case. That that that, that disc just hung up there and mm, waited for him to Yeah, that's up. true, but he did the crafty thing, which is he just ran underneath it quicker and got to the spot. I think the uh, sock guy, guy thought he had boxed him out. And he he read it. it faster. Yeah, yeah. I saw him do that on an off man in summer league, like I was saying, and he just ran halfway down the field and just deed up this pass that was to, you know, some totally other person for no reason. And he, he ran three quarters of the way down the field to get the D. It was one of the more improbable plays I've seen in my ultimate career. So Revolver with so that the... that was the first turnover, and let's see if Revolver can capitalize. They're moving they're playing it. pretty conservative, just as you predicted, Bren. Lefty flick, that should be an easy goal. And it is. Wow, number 28 there on Revolver. Yeah, that's Marty Cochran, just as they called out. Revolver. Revolver makes it look easy, huh? These are quick points, uh, except for the, f not except for that uh, string of fouls. Yeah, yeah, it slowed it down a bit there, and now now they're back up to speed. If anybody has any shout-outs they want to give, you can go to TonyLeonardo.blogspot.com and say something, type something. I know it's still early back in the... Oh, here we go. Let's see if we have a comment here. Let's see if this is anything of any interest or if it's just slamming us. Oh, uh, I don't recognize anyone on this Revolver team that really used to play for Jam. It would be nice if the announcers had some minimal level of knowledge about the players they're talking about. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't actually live in uh, right. the Bay Area, so um, nor do I live in Japan, which was... Uh, uh, I did the watch the Jam finals and the major players on Jam, and they're not on this roster, so sorry, Jeremy. If I'm wrong, I apologize. So uh, here we go. Um... If you have any other comments, <laughs> hopefully I won't respond so snippy to the next one. <laughs> uh, this pulled in. It's, uh, it looked uh, it like I setting up in a disc, vertical right? stack. Okay, here they got to break deep. And Is he going to put it? Nope. He's going to hold on to it. Inside out. Goes underneath. Underneath. Looks like a mostly vertical stack, but kind of a anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of an anything. It's not particularly structured. That's but Dave Beestock is one of the handlers, and that's got to be Wiggins, just by the way he's moving the disc. The really, uh, there's a nice forehand long. Yep, easy goal there. Defense isn't close. So uh, Wiggins jacks it up there to uh, to Phil Murray. See the replay. 
Well, I'm almost Forehand to travel, time. but I'm, I wouldn't call that. But. <laughs> no, no, what that? Nice little that swagger. cool little Egyptian swagger. Yeah, a little, little like. Little, little. That's nice. So yeah, one of the themes of this game we're talking about is how much that Sakai really brought it at the end of those games against Ironside and Chain. I saw the Ironside game, but I heard some people that you know against uh, against uh, a, a Chain. They were really really fired up at the end of that game too. Uh, you saw that game, Brent. Maybe you can tell us a little bit I about that. I saw about half that game. It was really. Uh, an another case of teams knowing each other and having okay. played each other. Okay. Uh, and um, although less so in that case. Less so that they're not on the same coast the way that Revolver and, and Sakai are. Uh, very athletic game. Some very some emotional moments in some of the calls. Definitely more of an American game than okay, some of the other really? games than we've seen. So it was a little chippy in the tournament, but not not not. I don't mean that in a in a foul calling way. Just uh, very very aggressive. Okay, so here's Revolver. Let's see. Um, this looks like a little junky zone D from Sakai. A little double team there from uh, Nate Castine maybe on uh, Sakai, but uncalled. Now they uh, they transition out to man. And uh, Revolver's got a, a quarter of a field to work it now. They got some options. Stanford's, uh, you know, this is tradition. Stanford is to, is to, to work it smoothly, actually. This is where... This is what the West Coast offense originated at Stanford University in the 80s, and it was a short um, offense, Brent. It was a back-and-forth, uh, not a lot of deep looks, um, just figure out which way your defender was going and then going the opposite way. Huh. Uh, a lot of short passes, quick throws, and so, you know, this is like it's going back to the basics. Here's Bo this under, and he sweet. floats one that could be a goal. Nope, not in for Bo Garcia. He's going to have some options here if he takes his time. Ooh, nice D, though, and nope, not enough. It's a swing yeah. around to the side, to the break mark side, on a dump and a swing, and it's a goal for Cahill. Do you think Ball we're going to just that single, uh, single turnover so far? We'll see. Uh, it's interesting to see so much... Uh, working of the disc by Revolver. They're not putting it up unless they're really sure of it. It's a little bit more conservative than Sakai, who's gone deep several times to great effect, but also with that one one uh, turnover earlier. Turnover's a big thing in this kind of a game. We're seven points into the game. We have only have a single turnover between both teams. So, uh, and uh, for those of you listening who or watching who have not seen a lot of Ultimate, at the very top level, as, uh, these a lot of turnovers, they don't happen every. They every don't point. happen. No. <laughs> you know? um, no. The 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 record being the Furious George, Death or Glory semifinal game in 2004, 2003, 2002. The years are slipping by me, Brent. <laughs> it was a 17-16 win for Furious, and Death or Glory made two turnovers the entire game, and Furious George made one. Wow. And that, that was the difference of the game. Three turnovers in, in the entirety of a 33-point match. So when you play to hold a disc in this level of open, you can do that. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time. So here we go. Sakai underneath. they got a cutter going deep. He's going to send it. No, he holds it. And uh, now he's got little options, but it uh, looks like he finds Ben underneath. Uh, Roughly vertical stack, looking downfield. Yeah. Players moving very vertically on the field. The break marks again for the open guys, not a problem. <laughs> See, you know, you can anybody can break almost any time. Great layout. Huge layout by Ben Wiggins to make that. Now let's see what he's going to do. He dumps it up the line for a score. <laughs> Wiggins makes sure of that one. Makes it look good. And then jams it into the corner. Gosh, we tried to do that in Masters and it never works. <laughs> James didn't. It looked like he jammed into Skippy, actually. Let's see if see it's that? Skippy that he hits. Hard to see. Aaron Talbert was saying. Uh huh. So, uh, so I got word here online that the three players. I guess that's not a. When you got a roster of about 26, I don't think three really constitutes a major contingent no, but of former Jam players. But um, there are pretty major players. Bart Watson. Team USA player won a bunch. Taylor Caschino, like I mentioned, has won with uh, Condors, the national championships, and then I didn't realize it was also part of that. 
Jam Contingent, and Brian Garcia. So that's the answer to that trivia question. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. Nope. Oh, oh, the comments are flying in. 4-4 uh, four, four, tie four, here. Four with Revolver still's got that, uh, still got that um, advantage. Yeah, it's 20 minutes into the game. The cap is, I believe it's the same as the other the other uh, uh, games we've seen, which is uh, a time cap at that's, 100 minutes. Is that going to come back? I don't think that's coming back. Wow. That's coming back really nicely. <laughs> that's about as good. <laughs> That looked very cool. <laughs> that was fun, fun to watch. Oh, 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 Garcia can't get to it. That's what a great pool can do sometimes. It really, like, changes kind of the makeup of, 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 of the flow of the pace of, of when you're going to pick up the disc and, and move it in there. Got to give a lot of credit to Sakai for that. We got a call. We got a call here. Bryn, we got to find out who made that pool. I don't know if you're watching down there. I didn't. I was trying to uh, follow the disc as it was up in the air. So, uh... Oh, oh, sneaks it in there. Forehand break. Big break. That was Castine to Ray Illion. Ray Illion, who I saw make a number of big plays. He teed up Danny yeah, Clark. See that again here? Iron side. And Watch him go low. Oh, right under the arm there. Look at that. Sneaky. Ray Illion from UW. I kept on saying, confusing him with Ray Parrish from UNC, so I apologize to Ray Illion and Ray Parrish. But, uh, wow, they got the break back. That's huge for Sakai. Still early in the game. You got to figure out if any of the games, Bryn, this one's definitely going to go to 17. I would think so. Especially, actually, the uh, there's not that many calls so far. Yeah, it's been <laughs> so, clean. It's been so nice and clean. the game is going to go pretty quickly if they keep if they don't turn it over and there are not many calls. So let's see. What else was Wigan, Wigan, Wigan's telling me before the game? Um, I got some notes here. You know, he said this is a lot of turnover. He said uh, since 2008 when they went as Team USA, um, when they won nationals and stuff, they've, had, they've turned over, you know, 75% of their team. <laughs> so this is an entirely new Sockeye team. He said, he said that we restock from the junior, juniors level players in Seattle. So he says we wow. don't have to go out of Seattle to get our players. Um, and uh, so, you, you know, it's amazing. The, 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 the amount of players that are around these days and how a team can be can win in 2008 and have an entire turnover and come back and, and be in the finals here at Club Worlds uh, two years later with, with you know, a impressive. totally revamped roster. Uh, Sakai playing a zone. Not a lot of wind, Not so a, this uh, is just to disrupt the rhythm. But this is something that if you, if you read Jim, Jim Paranella's books uh, on techniques and tactics, he says that, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter if, if they're going to score either way. We talked about how offensive efficiency, but if you get them out of rhythm, sometimes that can be an advantage for later in the game. And, you know, even for this point, just to show them something different. I think that's what they're concerned about here. You know, they got their break. They got their break after that huge pull. Yeah. They, what they need to do is, you know, make Revolver think a little bit more, get in their heads. And this is a good way to do it. It's a lot of work, but it, it's... it's Greeno oh. with the disc, he laces it deep to the end zone. He's got Garcia, he's got two of them there. Taylor Casquino, I think, with the, with the, uh, the score there. Sakai player underneath the line there. My bad, Rasmussen, Cassidy Rasmussen with the score. Good patient work on the part of, good patient work on the part of Revolver there. The score is tied 5-5. Five five. See Revolver walking off the field there a bit. There's another school we forgot, Brent, Santa Cruz. And that guy that just caught the goal, Cassidy from Santa Cruz. So we got a lot of feeder colleges out there. It's a big advantage to the U.S. At UC scene, Davis. Yeah. Especially in comparison to, uh, well, you know. The what do you see here in Prague? What's it like in Prague? Well, there's really not a university system in Europe the way there is in North America. Yeah. So there's, you know, every year you've got thousands of new players coming in more excited than ever and and that's a big competitive advantage for north america as a whole obviously it doesn't it, it doesn't make mean it, it's impossible to compete but it certainly helps when you uh, it helps the nation when they have such a broad base to draw from yeah it, it's, it's certainly been the case we played some european club teams here and you know, see different clubs in their they're, they're a club and it's the same guys and they stay together as a club they meet as a club it's like a social club but it's not like the, a, a constantly evolving university scene that's kicking out players. So here's the pull from Mac Taylor. 
And uh, it's hanging up. It's gonna, it looks like it's going to curl out of bounds, but, you know, maybe not. Stays Lazy. in, but dies uh, a little short. That's an easy dish up the line there. It's a good wow. 20 yards. But they don't jack it. There's a good little movement underneath, you know. No problem. Lots of space, lots of space. They got all day here to work it. They're working up the line. No problem. Caldo with the disc. Okay, now they got some trouble. Is he going to go for the uh, hammer? No. Break marks it. Swings it over to Ben. Brings it over to B-Stock. We'll see. B-Stock's been with this team for a while. We'll see if we can get the... Uh, it's Aaron Talbot. My bad. Yeah. The players are supposed to stay off the line a little bit, but we'll see if we can. Pick call. Pick call. So fives and Sakai with the, I think they got the break back. I think they're on serve, if I recall correctly. And no call. And go. And a score. And call. No call. Call? No call? They're uh. trying to figure it out. Revolver's like, guys, come on. Someone's got to. Somebody call it. Somebody yeah. heard, I heard something. I stopped running because somebody said something. Here's the. But, oh, yeah, it was a foul on the throw. So that's interesting, Brent. Brent. This is something in WIFT. If the rules say if a foul is made, play stops on the call. So uh -huh. if you foul and throw the disc, it's, it's not a completion. It should go back. To the back. original foul call, but we never play that way in the States. But if you read the rules specifically, and this happened in our game against Troubled Pass, it will say that the, the point of the f call of the foul at that point is where the disc goes to. So wow. that's why you saw half the players for Revolver stop. And then they're like, oh, it was one of those foul continuation. Well, in UPA, we always let that go. So whatever, just play it, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so they're almost ad adopting, adapting. You know, the, the rules are kind of merging in. It's really hard to keep track sometimes, the, the minor differences and the large difference between WIF, DIFF, and UPA, especially when you prefer one over the other, as some of these teams might. So there's the pool from uh, Castine, who uh, has gotten props online for being a puller. Uh, oh, and there's a big deep look. Okay, I think that's Garcia sending it deep. He's got a sockeye player. Wow, nice read there. And Rent checked it down. Is that Sherwood again? No, it's called a push-off foul. Well, oh, oh, no, no foul call, but he's a but, uh, warning from the sockeye player on Josh Wiseman. Well, we'll see the, re the replay here. It did look like there was contact. I mean, I think if there was, that's he was getting position. He's just simply boxing out. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's there was yeah. that's a good that's a good non-call. It's a good non-call by uh, Bailey Russell, number eight there for a sock guy, who mentioned it to him. Um, you know, just let him know, like, hey, you know, you did get me with the arm there. But I'm not calling it. Yeah, but I'm not calling so it. And yeah, I think that's that's the right thing. Yeah, that's nice. Well, um, the structure of that last on the O on the last play, it's kind of an L stack. They had the, a horizontal handler stack, and then most of the guys along the side, uh, along the close side to where the cameras are. So uh, really opening up the whole field, lots of room. Almost a called play. Maybe it was a called play with a specific uh, cut, but definitely creating a lot of room for that play to happen. You think Sakai's going to recognize that and try to, well, again, I guess we've discussed this a bit, but they've played each other all the time. So they must know that. Uh, I guess they're not going to try any trick defenses to kind of stop that, right? It's just, you know, that's our uh, man versus your man. That's a uh, revolver. Like Mike Payne was saying yesterday, it's it's difficult to get a lot of to win by a lot against a team that you know, that teams that know each other so well that have so much talent. Um, so they'll definitely be tweaking back and forth. They got a lot of. Got a, I think both teams have strategists that are you know paying attention to exactly what's happening to recommend what's yes. happening. And they'll be relaying that to the captains who will make a decision who will disseminate that in a, in a huddle. So we've got some more mention of some other jam, jam players, so it's my bad on this. John Hester, Mike Payne, Robbie Cahill, Alex Gesquire, Eric Halverson, Josh Greenow. Now, the real question is, were they, were they all with the team when they won it two years ago? That I well, don't Payne know. wasn't. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, see, I don't think, I, yeah, I don't I don't think, think he was anyway. either. But, but we don't want to talk. Uh, let's not talk about the past. Let's just talk about the present. <laughs> uh, and the score is 6-6. Six, six. Revolver's pulling to Sockeye. This is... Um, uh, wind has looked like it's almost dead completely. Might be a It's getting a little hot. 
it's it's, it's, <laughs> really, it's one of really the really booth, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> and that pulls out of bounds. These fields are pretty. Are they slightly different than uh, than U.S. regulation, or pretty much the same? But I know that in this tournament, some of the fields have been a little more narrow, just because of the fields they were able to this find. This looks like a UPA field. But I, I think mean, I'll be honest. at this at this for the finals and and a lot of the playoff games, they've been they've been full size. Wow! Oh, nice guy nice by, by Caldwell. By Caldwell. Well, you know, this is pretty consistent, this O-line here. Haven't seen, uh, you know, I've seen Wiggins and Caldwell and B-Stock out there the whole time. Ben with his uh, tricky little throws, he's so good at doing. Oh, oh, oh. away, that was from... Uh, was I don't that? know if he thought Caldwell was coming back to the disc. Yeah, it looked almost like a miscommunication. Yeah, mis yeah, because he, he, yeah, he threw it out to that, that spot out there. Got Ooh. Oh, up to Mac for the goal. Good quick reaction by Revolver there. Put the disc in play. Yeah, so we're seeing a pretty tight line, you know. He just picks wow, up the that. disc. Oh, Greeno moves it up to the line, drops it down. And now he's going to just... 29, just picks it up, picks and... It up, and uh, that's got to be Bart Watson, isn't it? Yeah, and that's Bart the Watson. God, Team USA, this guy's been there. He's done that. Yeah, he's a smooth player. It's a, that's a smooth character. He's, he's been doing this for a long time. Quick to recognize. Saw Mac open down there. Jacked it in there for the goal. And uh, that's a break for Revolver. So Revolver up by one. We've seen the, that would be the third turnover of the game, I think. Not no. keeping track, to be honest. Well, but yes, well right. no, maybe the fifth. I, we're not supported by a whole staff of stati statisticians up here, so <laughs> trying to keep Somebody's track of what's going Taylor's on. Taylor's last name is pronounced Casino, so it's Caschino, which I can believe the well, Italians. It's nice to know that people are uh, watching. <laughs> yeah. No, but I should know that with my Italian last name. Because <laughs> the two C's make the ch sound, so I thought it was a hard one. So whatever. Not make, we all make mistakes. So Sakai O, uh, anonymous says, Wiggins, B-Stock, Adam Holt, B.J. Sifton, who we haven't called out. Uh, Caldwell, of course, is everywhere. Phil Murray and Andrew Fleming, who, according to some of our posters, normally plays D. So um, Wiggins. Oh, someone got down on the field. Here. Got an. It looks like an injury. Maybe a. Not sure what happened there. Looks like a pick call. The uh, structure of the game not um, not as changing, not, not as dynamic as some of the other divisions. This is looks like a, most of the time a vertical oh, stack nice putting it up put. deep. That's going to hang up there for Andrew Fleming if he makes a play. No, he gets. Oh wow, hung up too much. Fleming can he go for it? He had he had Caldwell coming in behind him, so uh, he can he go for it. It looked like Bo Kittredge there was was able to. Uh, to come over the top and, and get to the spot before uh, Caldwell. Let's see that replay. Watch this. It's going too long and it hung up in the air. Oh. Oops. That's oh, that was injury. the er earlier injury. Yeah, I guess it was that. Fell down. So here, watch this coming up here. So there's Fleming. He's like, okay, Caldwell, you get it. But no, unfortunately, there's a larger man behind him with bigger ups, and that's Bo. Um, and um, the ball yeah. puts it into play. Once I'm again, that sort that. of L nice stack. Nice Alien, but it just didn't get to the, uh, should have been a little shorter and a little bit to the the, uh, the side and not to the uh, to the middle. So Caldwell here on uh, on Bo. Uh, this goes back in. Revolver pulling, that, you see that again, there's there's foul call. You're seeing the, uh, at the beginning of this point, or just at this moment, Revolver players in the middle of the field all pulling toward the closer sideline to get out of the way. There's three different players who were moving at that at the start of that, that accidental start of play just then. Hmm. So they're pulling to the near sideline to open up the far sideline is what you're saying. Yeah, the whole middle is open. Look at that. There they yep. come right over. Yep, yep. Now they got the us. whole other side. Wow, they're all oh, there side. There it is. Oh, my Huge goodness. Huge rip. Completely bro. open. Wow. Boy, did he let that go. Oh, send it back. Uh, I've seen... Bo travel before on video, I think, but I so didn't see this play, so I'm not going to make a, a we'll judgment get to see call. The, 
don't know, it looked pretty clean right there. It looked clean from that looked angle. Clean from that angle. Looked very clean from that angle. Uh, anyway, it's coming back. Will he do it again? Will he pull what I call now the Brody Smith play? That is Fury, I believe. I think that was some of our Fury players, world champions. And a swing that up. Little <laughs> the little dishy flip up forehand. Scuba over the top. Uh, back to Bo. Look at Bo in the middle of the field now. I haven't even really seen him go to the end zone yet. Pops it up over the top there. A uh, little I.O. backhand down the line. Nice. Oh, drop it to Bo. A little dangerous, but they make it work. A lot of space deep. A lot of space deep. They're, it looks like they're waiting for that deep that deep cut. Yeah, they really do have moment. a lot of patience, and Sakai isn't pressuring them. I'm not sure why exactly, but... Yeah, it doesn't. They don't seem their D doesn't look as fired up as as I've seen it. Also, win in that semifinal, for example, is around there a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's still early in the game, you know. No, I'm I not saying it's six seven. Up. That's just a single point and a and a possession away right now. But number eighty there is uh, is Taylor Casino, by the way, uh, who's part of that handle there. So they have a pretty good rotation of guys there. Uh, number fourteen is oh. bid and score. So, Mike Taylor to see who got the score there. But a goal for Revolver. And uh, ah, it's another break for them. 8-6. Revolver's up by two. Number 14 is Sherwood. Coming out of Westchester, New York. So let's talk about what, uh, the, some of the interviews here in the newsletter, Brent. You talked to Revolver. You talked to Mike Payne last night. What did you, uh, what did you learn from him? Uh, it was interesting. I talked to Mike Payne. He's a very serious player. Uh -huh. Boy, does he take his ultimate seriously. Not that a lot of pe people here don't, but he, 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 uh, he's all business. His, um, he, he, was, he talked about the double challenge, like I was saying earlier, of trying to peak at both Worlds and at Nationals and how difficult that is for such a whole, te whole team. Yeah. And he, they started their practicing earlier, made their cuts, uh, I think he said in March, to, in order to make sure that they were practicing. So they've had four months of practicing before okay. they came here today. Before Worlds, all right. Uh, they've, they've had a little bit of a difficulty adjusting to the tournament in terms of the logistics of this country. Uh, maybe that's I don't know, <laughs> it's an American thing, but uh, <laughs> they, the, the fields are far apart, so it has oh. been a little time to get between the fields. Okay. Uh, and he said the sockeye in pool play was uh, also one of the hardest parts in the tournaments on the field. And the buzz okay. bullets, the Japanese team in the semifinal, because yeah. they play such a completely different style of ultimate. Uh-huh. Right. I was, I was wondering, they, you know, they... Buzz bullets have been crushing the competition, and yet Revolver comes out and seems to handle them pretty well. 17-14. Um, I was kind of wondering how that, how that came about. Well, they uh, they said it took them a little while to get used to, to adjust to it, but once they once they adjusted, they they came ahead and 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 won. I think the final score was 17-14. Uh, 14, yeah. yeah. So, um, but the bu buzz really, that was a very interesting game to watch too. Just you, did you totally watch that game? Then, again, yeah. part of that game. And okay. Didn't watch the whole thing, but. Uh, uh, again, shorter Japanese players against these very tall, very uh, high-jumping American teams, uh, but with very um, the ability to huck it, very fast huck, to get that, that huck off faster than a lot of the American teams can. Okay, right. Like, th there's not that big wind-up they're used to seeing, oh, my goodness, he's about to put it. From <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh, uh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. They just flick it, and all of a sudden and it's, it's gone. Uh, it's gone. Okay. So they had to adjust to that, but they did that. Um, both teams very oriented in uh, internally toward bringing uh, toward good communication within the team, giving people opportunities and so on. Uh, both both you know different personalities on the teams, but both both uh, teams are very interested in the long term, growing their team year after year. Yeah, Sakai is. Uh, I was talking about this earlier when I was live blogging from the Ironside game. I, I sense that Saka has a great brand. They've always had a great brand. They got a, they've had a great, it sounds silly, but they've had a great disc design. they got a great name. That looks like it might go out of bounds. Uh, no, it's coming in. So, um, you know, and they've been able to... Oh! oh saw that coming. Whew, lazy throw. Oh, oh, wow! Unbelievable. 
he just dropped two passes, you can almost say, because he should have caught the Callahan. That was, uh, wow. that was an amazing turn of events there. Nick Chapman just blows through the lazy sockeye throw. We'll see that. Can't uh, get the layout catch. And then here just softies it. That's when he should have laid out yet again. Unfortunate break for well, The disc is up already. Wow, this is going to go right back to Revolver, though. There's six men, yeah. eight men under the disc. What did I tell you? Back to Revolver. That's what happens when you flip. There's no that should be called back here. Yeah. The Revolver players pointing at the other guy, saying, you guys hit each other. Bart Watson saying, no. Number 25, number 6 for Sakai. That's Frank Barrich for Sakai. Number 6, Phil Murray. Did you see it? What did it look like? Uh, it was just out of the frame. It looked like a mess. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the, this is the right call for the disc to, to stay here. You, you can't really call too much of a foul. I didn't see somebody come crushing over. No, it was a hospital throw. Yeah. I mean, look, there's hospital throws, and yet you can still Hammer. be fouled. You know what I mean? But I yeah. didn't see anybody jumping on someone's back. I thought they were all legitimately going no. to the disc. And they didn't have to call the ambulance, so that's... Yeah. So you can even technically call it a hospital so foul? Right. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> so uh, number 29, that's, that's Bart, of course. 40, Mark, Mac, Mac Taylor with the disc. Revolver's chance to go Out up of, here. Uh, Colorado. Yeah, Revolver's got... Uh, this would put them up three, which would be very significant. Yeah, it seems like Sakai goes down every first oh, look half at that. of every game. That's too far. Oh, that was really. Uh, I can see. I can't see what number that was. Didn't really Revolver like that throw. Fake forward. The Sakai player bought it. Didn't need and that And then throw. went deep. The Sakai player tr caught up. I uh, tried to catch up, but couldn't. But the disc was just. She couldn't. Couldn't quite. Uh, Revolver couldn't quite hold on to Ashland, it. Ashland. Ashland. Joa with the layout bid in the end zone. The throw from Mac Taylor. I'm telling you, I don't like that. That. That that uh, the out and around, he's got a. It's so hard to lay that in there on that angle, and there's no need for that. You know what? If he's going to do that, put a hammer up. Huh? Yeah. Otherwise, he's throwing that to the short corner. He's throwing a a, 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 a back uh, uh, outside in, blady backhand to the far corner. Ooh, double helix. Wow. That was uh, that was ugly. That was uh, not pretty. There's a couple, we've seen a couple rough throws by Sakai in a row. It would be, if they get the disc again, they might want to like call Brandon, there. We just did this on purpose. I mean, honestly, like, okay, listen. We tried to give away your point, and you didn't catch the Callahan. <laughs> and, you know, Karma says that we should just keep on throwing the disc away to you until you score. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I would, what does it look like to you? Uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like... Uh, it doesn't look like good. From the very beginning, where they allowed that, that almost D... Yeah. That um, I mean that they're they're not playing with the enthusiasm that we saw in some of the other games. You don't need Actually, enthusiasm on offense, Bryn. What you need is consistency, good throws, and good decisions, and that's what they've been lacking. Talking to Dave Best Bestock, he said uh, one of the challenges that Sakai has in general is, well, I will paraphrase. This is, is halftime, by the way, guys. Oh, already. Yeah. Six to nine. That was a four goal run by Revolver to take half nine six. Um, that's a so, pretty uh, big uh, pretty big deal. Yeah, uh Bestock said that uh, he had uh, to paraphrase to, to paraphrase he, he felt that sometimes Sakai had a had a problem playing to their ability at all times. Yeah, gosh, you could see that. A little that's, lack of focus maybe. And uh, you know, it's to be fair, set is day seven of the tournament. And I'm not, it's not an excuse, but all these teams here are used to two, three-day tournaments. This is day seven. It's the longest tournament I think there is. And, well. you, and, and again, I don't, I'm not making an excuse, just saying that, uh, for example, Liz Penny was saying for, uh, uh, for Fury, and they just went and won it, their focus ahead of this tournament was actually training for that length of the tournament, the length of those games, having the resilience to, to stick it out. Uh, it is the heat of the day. I hope that's not what's happening to Sakai, but... I think they're just what we said earlier. They're losing focus. Okay, we're watching the plays. There's Wiggins jacking it deep, too. I think that was Wiggins to Caldwell. Actually, that was not Wiggins. I apologize. Uh, here is Robbie Cahill. It looks like he's going to swing it. And there's the score. <laughs> no, Brian Garcia's going to throw the score. Okay, there's the score to 
Rasmussen. Did your hand block that hammer? Yeah, it's hot. It's hot out there. And Sakai, you know what? I, it's every game. They seem like they go down by two or three and they try to make a big run at the end. You know, that's the only thing I'm getting out of this. But, uh, you know, they can't do that always. I asked Ben Wiggins walking over to the field. I was like, you guys made some big comebacks against these other teams. You know, you got your swag. You got things going on. You got one more left in you? And he said, I sure hope so. <laughs> So he seemed to it seemed to he seemed to sense that he knew that they, they were treading on water, just you know thin water, just what you had said too, thin ice. Uh, yeah. You know that they can they can be hot and cold, and <laughs> you know they can lose focus, and, and like Ben said, yeah, I hope they got one more left in them. We'll, we'll find out second half. Uh, something actually, you were talking about having seen a lot of the same players on the line on Sakai. Yeah. Uh, something else Payne was saying that they've been able to. At least as of semifinals yesterday, he actually had stat numbers he was throwing at me, saying something like his team, his uh, team has played 22, 22 points less than uh, the Buzz Bullets or something, <laughs> or uh, or maybe it was I think it was compared per to Buzz player. Bullets. <laughs> and no, no, per player, the top because the Buzz Bullets only brought 15 uh -huh, players, uh -huh. which is obviously insane. Um, but he said that their key players versus the Buzz, buzz Bullets factor of four difference. Factor of four. Four times as many. That <coughs> Payne was telling players. me this last night. That's what he said. Yeah. So I think they actually sat down with those stats that are available online yeah. and actually figured who the key players were and actually saw, you know, they're trying to saving their key players for for the most important games of the uh, of the tournament. You guys, we're probably going to end up cutting into a break here at halftime, but uh, if you get a chance, do check out those stats online, WUCC2010.com. You'll see the stats for all the games, all the matches, all... God, there must be like 400 games being played. It's over there's 700. A, over 700 games. And uh, there's there's time of possession. There's what time each goal is scored, goal leaders, assists, et cetera, et cetera. A little bit of everything. So check that out. Have some fun online. I hope you're enjoying the broadcast. And uh, one more half of play here from Worlds 2010. We'll come back at you, and uh, we'll see if that guy can uh, make a run in the second half. Bottles in here. We're not drinking them. Figuring out. Yeah. 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 
Play-off KB Extraligy v rugby. Finále regionální pokrové ligy. Mistrovství světa v hokejbalu mládeže. Mistrovství světa v Ultimate Frisbee. Mistrovství republiky v Ultimate Frisbee. 17. mistrovství Evropy v akrobaci motorových letounů. Střižna CZ. Vysíláme živě. Welcome, welcome back to the Prague World Ultimate Club Championships 2010 in beautiful Prague, Czech Republic. We are watching the open final between the USA teams, Sakai and Revolver. Revolver is up 9-6 at the half, about 54 minutes into the match right now. You're watching, uh, you're watching the, a guy who bid 500 euros 
after an auction started at 50 euros to donate money to send a kid to an ultimate peace camp. That's nice. And there's the pull. Sakai is pulled to revolver. Yeah, they might want to focus on the game here. Here we go. I don't know if they realize that the game is happening. The timing here was messed up between this little promotional thing. But that's all right. This is all happening at once now. So oh, uh, to turn there. Interesting uh, structure we're seeing here. It's a little bit hard for you to see the whole field, but revolver is oh, 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 oh that looked down. down. Definitely down now. So let's see if Sakai can uh, can make this conversion here. This would be uh, kind of important for them giving Oh, Jack's deep, that's gonna be a goal. Nice, Ray Alien for the score. Okay, they already look excited. That's a pretty good start for them. Saka, a great start for them. Like you're saying before the break, Saka has come back many times in this tournament. Yeah. When yeah. they needed to, and they certainly need to now. They, listen, they were pulling to be down 10-6, basically. That would have been a four-point swing, um, which is certainly make upable. But getting this uh, break off the mark is a good way to start, that's for sure. One point at a time. Let's should, see where they get. Should note, though, that turnover wasn't really forced. Yeah, no, it wasn't, but they'll take whatever they get. Absolutely. Wind, wind is kicking up a little bit out there, but still pretty chill. Lots and lots of people here in the stands. The, the stands on the opposite side are actually uh, uh, sort of the, the more distant bleachers. The near side stands are absolutely completely full. And on both sides of the uh, main uh, uh, the main tribune as well. Seven nine, revolver is up, receiving from Sakai. Nice curving pull, big bounce. Revolver sets up. Pulled all the men to one side of the field and put it up deep. Whoa! Whoa! Wow. Wow. Amazing sticky hands. That's Bo. It stuck in his hands, didn't it? That's amazing. It, against two on one, it still came up with it. Ray Ilian got a piece of that. Another Sakai player got a piece of it. It bounced around in the air and it stuck. Looking for to Bo's hand. Let's see that that replay. Watch this. Here it is. Three guys. Ray Ilian goes up, up against up. Bo. Gets it. Wow. Oh wow! Two hands and and Bo just sacrifices his body. He's he, he he's like he's gonna fall down on his ass. He's, he's going up for that. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't get the big sky that he's known for. Ray Ilian gets the big sky, but yet he comes down with it. Big play, big play. Interesting uh, that the we're continuing to see Revolver. They sort of, they had their stack kind of in the middle of the uh, middle of the field, but when that disc, just before that disc went out, went up, the two or three guys in the middle of the field pulled over to the side, pulling the defenders out of the yeah. way too. Yeah, And uh, really opening up the whole middle for the throw. It's quite that's quite good team play to, to be organized enough. Well, yeah, you really have to commit. You have to commit your defender. You have to get your com defender to commit, I should say. Um, to follow you. Yeah, yeah. Like if, if if you're pulling over to create space on the field, you know your your defender has to be frightened that you know he could you could go deep on him. So he has to be honest. He has to stay on you. And not poach the lane. Okay, here's a big break deep if he wants it. No, it goes underneath. Okay, just keeps a foot down. Nice play. Sakai moves it up the line on the comeback from Fleming there. I think Fleming's got the disc here. He's uh, getting bodied up to back to uh, Ben. Hard pick. It, but, you know, Adam Holt's got, got not in the Not in the uh, play there, but uh, <laughs> two uh, revolver players ran into each other with a little bit more flash than actual. But it was definitely a pick. Disc goes up deep. Wow, and all alone, but it looks like it's I think be the out frisbee dog might get that one. Yeah. <laughs> right. If you front. weren't watching during the halftime shows, we missed the frisbee dogs. Friend, <laughs> what did you think of the frisbee dog? Disc is about to yeah, beautiful. You missed the design. The product design here is great. There, we had a question online about the tournament publicity. They do have billboards up around town. Yep. Um, for the tournament, but um, 
you know, it's a little overshadowed by the World Cup, i got to say, I have to admit. And Wimbledon and, uh, <laughs> and, the, Wimbledon uh, and uh, um, Tour de France. And Tour de France. <laughs> and LeBron James, for those of and you LeBron in the U.S. LeBron James in the States. Uh, so we're not getting, you know, so much love here necessarily. But, no, but um, the, uh, right here. the uh, shop has sold out a lot of stuff in the first couple of days, actually. So they'll be ordering more for people who actually want more of that yeah. uh, design. For Frisbee players, this is great. And 136 teams, biggest team ever. But for... The outside world, of course, you know, we're never going to be. Um, did disc is wow, up. that's a great looking forehand. I like how that sinks down there nicely in the back of the end zone. They didn't even need to do that, but we'll take it. No complaints. He had that disc the whole time. Very pretty. Beautiful pass. Beautiful pass. Very pretty. I want to see the replay on we that. see the replay, and I'm going to bet. I think it's win. Let's see what happens here. No, it's not win. This goes up. Wow, look at that. He IO'd it and then kept it just hung what up there. A throw. What a throw. A Mac and a beautiful Mac cut, Taylor. too, to set yeah. that off. Who's that, sorry? Mac, Mac Taylor from Colorado. He and Bo Kitt were buddies there at Colorado for a while. I think they might have won a championship together. Someone online can comment, hopefully, on that and tell us the full story. But Mac Taylor was in the running to for the Callahan last year, I believe, uh, even though my team beat Colorado one, at least one point. Never made national, so let's not give all the props to Notre Dame. But Matt Taylor, a uh, very top-level player there, and that's a see why. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he released from low and inside on a forehand, swept it up, and put it in a position no one in the world but his man could get to. Do a little bit of the... The Vuvuzelas. The Vuvuzelas out there. I love the Vuvuzelas. I heard them a lot there in the Ironside soccer game. It was great. <laughs> red Lights had them. The Red Lights team is the Dutch Masters. <laughs> Dutch Masters. The Dutch Masters team, of course, they're, they're uh, soccer teams in the, in the finals. And uh, Revolver pulling up. They're up 11-7 to seven to Sockeye. It's Bailey Russell with the rip. Bailey Russell on D. He's known as an O player. It's kind of interesting. Uh, though he can do a little bit of everything. He's an East Coast transfer to the West Coast. Uh, he's tough to guard. That guy's tough. I had guarded Bailey Russell before. It's not fun at all. He's got big clown feet, and he moves really fast with them. It's disturbing. Oh, Wiggins lost a big forehand. Too far. No, it's going to hang too much. Oh, but the garbage is collected, and that's going to be a goal to Caldwell. Yeah, you can see that floating. That's this. See that hanging up there. Fortunately, his, uh, his team knew where to uh, track that down. And uh, Caldwell collects himself a point. Watch this. Both, team, both guys go up. I uh, can't see who that is underneath. It follows the disc perfectly well. But um, scores a score. Nice work. Now they'll need to get the D. Let's turn this game around. We're Let's give a handshake to number 10 there. I wonder if that's uh, who tracked it down. Moses Rifkin. Oh, that is. Look at that. It's Moses. Well, I didn't even recognize him. I forgot that Moses is out there. A long time Dr. Glory player. Mm -hmm. Boston guy. Been out now on the West Coast for a bit. I think he played with Atlanta for a while, too. He's been around. Great guy. Moses Rifkin was part of that 17-16 Furious George win over Dr. Glory in the semifinals. Wow. And there was three turnovers total. <laughs> so, uh... Was that, uh... That exciting game to watch? Uh, you know, I wasn't actually at that game. <laughs> okay. I've seen some pretty exciting games. I did like five, six years in college na uh, club nationals and college nationals. But that year, I was not there. So. Pull goes up. That's a good one. No, it's, like it's, it's going to hook out of bounds, no, is my I guess. It's, no, no, it's can't tell at all anymore. I should give up guessing on the pulls. Now we'll see what the uh, revolver sending someone deep. But coming back, sort of... Uh, they seem to be using one half of the field to stack in. I'll pick there. Uh, to give you a sense of the whole field, Revolver does seem to be using the far half of the field as the cutting area, both, both coming to and going away, and sort of recycling in the near side of the field. Vertical stack set up. There's a dump and a swing as a give and go. Sakai putting on some good pressure here. They need to. As 
that a foul? Some kind of foul somewhere? Everybody can take it. Take a deep breath and pick call. Yeah. Let's see. This Hopefully some action here, but it's moving a little slow. That's not too many calls, but. Oh, Ooh, nice hot bit there. That. Castine can't quite get to it, though. So Cahill with the disc. Dumps it down. There's the up the line to Bo. Bo wants no, uh, you know, it's a good decision, really. He doesn't need to put it. They're up too big. Okay, Bo, this is going to be Bo. Fireworks for Bo. Wow. That's what I tell you. That was very nice. However, Castine, who looks hurt, just kind of disappointed in himself but um let's see the that was basically here. bows the entire way ever yeah, since I don't it was, it that was released was, that was a tough thing to yeah. uh, a little he, spike he, by bow just to let him know hey you know you're still you gotta knock the champ off the the high post sakai didn't have position though so he was also moving forward probably cutting yeah exactly off his, exactly it was ups. it was position favored bow and um and he used you it you know i i tell you i saw the stat sheet and there's 10 guys on this revolver team that have more goals and assists total uh, at Worlds than Bo Kittredge. And Bo Kittredge is a guy that, you know, can catch seven of those a game, no problem. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, I, you know, in a way, you know, that little spike at the end was like, hey, guys, you know what? <laughs> you might think I'm not around, but I'll tell you what. You put a disc up in the air, that's going to be mine. So here we go. Mac Taylor is going to rip it down uh, on the pull. It's 12-8 revolver. They are firmly in control of this match. Um, they're not dominating, but they're playing very solid right now. And I haven't seen any mental cracks out of them, except for a couple hell points uh, that they pulled out. So Big uh, pull. It's going out of bounds, coming back in again. Very nice. Landing right in the back of the end zone. And they've got the D on, keeping the disc back in Sakai's own end zone. Swing up the line. Ooh, no, he's in. Yeah. That's Moses number 10, kept it in there. Floating yeah. it up a little bit further, might have been oh. met. Fakes the jack, goes back under. Good switch there by uh, Revolver Defenders. Uh-oh, nope. Uh-oh, let me see one. Couple guys deep. Is it Talbot? Caldwell, oh, that's a big wow. It's going to be a goal. No, it's uh, sending it back. Sending it back. Usually when you see a guy that open, you got to be wary that it could be a reason for that. Really defenses won't give that up so easily. They had a, Revolver had a nice switch there earlier where it was quite obvious that somebody was going to get open deep, but they just... They saw each other and made the uh, kept that from uh, kept that from being dangerous. So it's Adam Holt, number 40, for uh, for Sakai going up the line. Moses ripping with the disc. Got a couple lineup cutters. Oh, he does. Throws it up the line. Gets it up the line. Back to Moses. Oh, that's uh, that's Wiggins. My bad. Wiggins uh, dumps it over here to Feastock. He wants Wiggins, can't find him, wants Moses, can't find him either. Oh, he's forced to try to jam it up to Andrew Fleming, and he can't get there. Stay revolved he looked, right there. He looked for the dump, but didn't see it and looked yeah. back upfield. He looked uh, at two different dumps and didn't stay long enough to watch the dumps. The yeah. dumps recovered. Oh, nice catch there. And uh, yeah, that cost him. Would, so let's see what revolvers D-line. Nick Chapman with the catch right there with the disc. Dumps it, swings it back over. No one's cutting deep, but being conservative. Chapman, I guess. No, that's Sherwood, isn't it? Yeah, it is Sherwood. Uh, that's Mac Taylor. Time out. Time out call. Good call. Good call. Good call. Very good, well-coached team here. That uh, on that turnover, uh, Sakai did look look to two dumps, as you as you know as you said, didn't yeah. like either of them. Then threw threw into the poach, basically. Yeah. Uh, always, uh, you know, on my training, it was if you commit to the dump, you you wait out, wait for the dump to get open because they'll get open immediately. But they got out of position there. The problem was that 
If he threw to space for the one dump that was behind him, he would be throwing into a potential block by the other dump's defender. Uh huh. Yeah. So, so then he turned to look at the other dump and had a similar situation and a worse angle because it was a cross field. So he would have had to put it on the, like towards the wind back over to the far corner. So, uh, so he just, they just got themselves out of position. And uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what that is. I, I don't know who to credit on that or, or, or say had, had a fault with that, you know. But that's just bad positioning that they got themselves into. Un, un, unfortunate, really, you know. Mm -hmm. They couldn't focus on one dump. They couldn't get the uh, couldn't get that open. So. Well, it's uh, and some T-shirt giveaway time Both now. Are. I don't want to say it's a. Uh, uh, it was unforced in one sense, but if Revolver hadn't been in the right place to take advantage of that, that would, you know, they had to they had to pull that down. Absolutely, no, that's great defense. Did you see who that was? Like, they got the D. No, Did not see who got the D. I looked like a number eight or a number nine. So it was Sam Harkness or Bailey, but um, hard to tell from up here. So Revolver setting up in a, uh, their 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 handlers are horizontal across the field, and it's a straight horizontal stack. About 20 meters ahead of that, just in front of the goal line. Oh, that suck at numbers. I'm sorry, Eric Halverson or someone else. Uh, okay, swing it over to, is that Cahill? No, that's number 80. That's Look, call. Sorry, I mixed up the uh, teams. Uh, Taylor Casino there, number 80 in the dump swing position. It up. Oh. Can't believe they gave that up. Nice little fake, and then Taylor just runs up the line, and the defender for Sakai didn't get over to the line to cut off the line. You've got to cut off the line. That's the most basic thing in, in the game, really. You want to force them to throw more passes, to force them to throw through the middle of the field, try to get your blocks that way. See Mike Payne there writing in his little yeah, book? That was, that was Mike Payne you saw there on the field real briefly. The uh, the player captain, I don't know how much One of the, yeah, yeah. He, he plays these days, but um, player coach captain, long time San Francisco uh, Bay Area player for a number of teams. You noticed how many uh, turnovers by uh, Sakai were a result of a, a poach? Was that something that's happened a lot, or I can I, I'm I'm wondering if the uh, the fact that that the Sakai defense is being pulled out of the middle of the field unlike the revolver defense. I'm wondering if that has any kind of effect. That's a good question. Um, yeah, they haven't been... You can't say that they've been turning it over on deep looks where they've been hucking it away. Um, they have that those sloppy pushes. double helix hammer, but... Yeah, yeah it looks like... It looks like revolver's D, I'd say, more than Sakai's. In other words, they're not unforced errors more as well as there are quasi forced errors by the mm. defense so yeah pressure I, I, maybe I, I pressure yeah the pressure the pressure's there a little bit you know and it's crafty pressure oh nice look for give and go no nope. yeah that or their offense just isn't so dialed in or, you know. all well picks it up back to adam holt Oh, that's a rip from Big Wins to... Oh, he's got something. Oh, Bailey put that up. Oh, tipped. So. Nice little touch on it. He threw to a smaller receiver. The revolver defender was taller, and he ended up nagging the disc to B.J. Sefton. Um, and he gets something out of it, at least. Yeah, there's Wiggins. He gets it over to Andrew Fleming. See on the replay here. Slimmy gets it up to Caldwell. Caldwell, and then Caldwell gets it back, and then that goes Adam Holt, and that goes to we think it's Bailey Russell who throws this. So he's got the got a good guy there, but the taller revolver player ends up macking it to Sockeye for the goal. 13-9 is the score now. Nice heads up on Sockeye to pick up that 
desk. Seventy, just just about to enter the seventy-fifth minute. Um, although at this at this rate, it looks like yeah, it'll just be a game to seventeen. Won't need the time cap. Of course, there's a question if you ever need a time cap in a finals game, but that's another question. Sakai puts yeah. up the disc. Looks like it's going to go out the back, and it does. Almost hitting the cameraman. So they will uh, take the brick, which will put it a good third of the field up, a, a third of the distance up the field. Revolver taking their time about coming up. Looks like they're setting up a horizontal offense. Again, with the three handlers back with the horizontal with the disc and four uh, cutters downfield horizontal. And that is indeed what it is. Got a cut in. Someone going deep and someone uh, cycling through. And some good D there. Puts having to put it up. Little, whoa, very, very high D uh, ho there. Uh-oh, and a ho D for the turnover. That's, that's the kind of D Sakai needs to make. And that's one. And it's put up deep. There we go. Wow. Uh, Revolver just outran him there. That was Bo. There you go. He just, uh, and there's another huck deep, but this one is going to get picked up by Sakai. They're looking a little trigger happy right now. Both teams. See who calms down first. Well, if they get this, this could be something for Sakai here to build on maybe two in a row. They need something. Sakai working it. Working it back and forth. They've got a vertical stack centrally down the field. I see both teams are a little tired. At this they do look tired. That's all right. They're, no, they're just trying to find their spacing. Oh, uh, well, they both no got call. plenty of people to replace them with. Ooh, oh. sneaks it inside there. Number 22, Nate Castine gets it in there. And that goal is going to count. Find Spencer Wallace for the goal. People uh, yeah, here we'll see that last little, there's the dump and the throw for the score. D Revolver nearly got a finger on that. I'm not sure if they hadn't tripped up a little bit, they wouldn't have had a D. And Brent, I'm going to take a little bit of a step away just to get some air. It's pretty hot here in the booth. 80, uh, high 80s, but much hotter in the sun. It's uh, 13 to 10. Saka's put in a couple now. But, and it's the 78th minute, and we're only playing to 17, most likely. So Revolver is just four, four points away from, uh, from clinching the title. A few players with their hands, noticed a few players with hands on their knees at this point. Cup, that last point was a little bit particularly long with those turnovers. Longer than I think, certainly longer than the average points have been between these uh, teams in this game or the others. Sakai, Sakai pulling, trying to create another, continue, uh, continue their set of scores here and, ex and come back in a game that has mostly been run by Revolver. Revolver again, pulling their people down the side and jacking it deep to a wide open number six. Not in, but almost. And looking a little, little forehand there for the score. Number six, Josh Wiseman with that cut deep. That uh, offense of Revolver seems to be very, very effective. They, they uh, we'll see how much of that we see here. We'll just see the end of that. But part of the reason you're seeing so much, so many open uh, throws to revolvers, revolver deep, is that they'll be uh, the they'll do the revolver will swing the disc behind around, 
and suddenly there'll be one, basically one guy running deep, and everyone else on the field is gone. So every, all the other defenders aren't there to help out. The uh, one uh, sockeye player on that defender is, is a couple steps behind, and they just haven't been able to catch up with a good throw like that. So Revolver one point closer, 14 to 10, at just about 80 minutes into the match. The wind looks like it's picked up just a little, but it continues. It, it doesn't seem to be much of, an, uh, much of a factor. Most of the, the, uh, most of the inertia and momentum in this game being created by the teams themselves. Revolvers see that number 40, Adam Holt, setting up for the pull. See a lot of the same players out there on the Sockeye team. That's Mike, Mike, uh, not Mike Caldwell picking it up, but he's deep right now, deep threat. Sockeye stacking up in the middle of the field, vertical stack, moving it forward. A little foul there on the mark, number 37. Sakai set up in a vertical stack. There's a break, high hand, back hand break, and a D. A D by, by number 13 on Revolver. Tyler Grant. Revolver with a back hand forward. Scuba, oh, too high. Picked up by Sakai. Players running a little nice grab there. Players running a little more judiciously. Ooh. Foul on the throw. Well, this will go back. No contest on the foul. Sakai will tap it in. So they're looking out, and he jacks it deep. Three Sakai, one. Oh, picked up by Revolver. <laughs> he jumps up and oh, brings the disc back again. Another foul. Nice D, though. Beautiful D. I think that was number uh, 14, Mark Sherwood, with that. I don't see that. Wow. Great ups. And we'll start with the disc again on the on the line over there. Sakai lined up vertically, some vertical stack, uh, forehand force into the sideline. Revolver not giving him much of anything. Looks like there's another call there. Not sure what that one was. Looks like a stall or a contested stall. I'm not sure. They'll work it out over there and let us know. Not too many foul calls this game. Uh, sometimes American Ultimate is seen as uh, foul happy, particularly at the, at the at the higher men's levels, open levels. But um, this game has been pretty clean. With diff rules are a little different, as we've been noting. Um, I know that both teams have tried to learn those rules and have actually, uh, Saka even has a set of, they have actually a system by which if one of the players isn't sure, they know who they can turn to on the team that is sure and has a better idea of what the rules are. So if they, on the field, if they have a problem, they can try to resolve that quickly. But this is not one of those moments as they continue to talk about it. time ticking forward. It's 84 minutes now. And Revolver up by 4, 14, 10. Not sure what's taking that time. <laughs> Some of the zoo, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the cr crowd out there. A uh, lot of discussion. Uh, 
don't know why it would take this long to figure this out, but I think they're about to start as long as a full time out there, I think. There the disc is in and he puts it up. Oh. And uh, what a catch by number 24, Sakai, Joe Sefton. We'll see that again. Just, just taps it in, puts it up. A dual layout there by the D and the O. What a, what a catch. Takes a lot of, uh, takes a lot of focus for a team to be able to immediately come uh, after such a long, long timeout or <laughs> set of fouls to put it up that, to put it up that well, and for someone to hit them that specifically. Definitely, that it's a, that's a good sign for Sakai that there's still three points pa uh, back, and uh, Revolver is just three points away from, from winning the title. Haven't seen very much change in the offense and defense in terms of the structure, at least not from where I'm sitting. Um, Revolver continues to utilize a stack that kind of moves out of the way a little bit into the point and, and helps set up those deep cuts. While uh, Sakai has been uh, in a more conventional uh, vertical stack in the middle of the field. Sakai pulls it. Brings it up to, and Revolver is having a little trouble moving it off the line there. But there it goes up. And again, there's someone deep, but not jacked. And takes the easy I.O. Oh, looks like he had a foot on that butt. Picked it up, and the deep throws. And he go out the back, I don't think. And it's a score. It's professional play. Uh, recovering from a little, you know, a near foot block to... Put it up deep for the score. Get one of these two, right? And we can Mike see that. There he is. And he puts it up. <laughs> that was Mike that just caught that. Yeah, there he is. There's toes Mike. it. Toes the yeah. line, right? Almost yeah. toes. Yeah. He got nice. him. He looks like he's ambling along. He's, he's yeah. older than I am. He's uh, he definitely has a uh, leadership position in the. His, his stats are. If you see goals scored and uh, goals scored and throws for scores in this tournament, they're they're on the pretty much on the bottom of the. The bottom of the team. But Who, Mike's? Yeah, but the yeah. effect he has on the team is oh, Mike's is a, the Mike's. leadership role. Mike used to be uh, the defining playmaker for a number of San Francisco teams. So uh, now he, and and Stanford, um, he was known for a long time as always the bridesmaid, never the bride. He had suffered uh, finals defeats many times in the past. Do uh, we've been talking a little bit about the trend toward having a. Um, managers and coaches yeah do you see more older more experienced players staying on the team and being in t in taking a leadership position but taking but taking less playing time as a as a broader that's what revolvers says they're trying to do maybe we can answer that question at the i don't see that honestly didn't happen with um with boston you know mm -hmm. they reformed uh, i'm not seeing that in the new philly open team uh i don't see that at chain lightning um no, I don't think that's a trend in open at all. Well, it's certainly working for Revolver in terms of uh, for a team that's only a few years old to be so strong. I wonder if San Francisco has always had coaches. I mean, and the women's, that's what they're known for. Here's the big look. Here's Here, Caldwell. Caldwell's going to rip it. He hangs it to the left, so that could be trouble. Floating a bit, though. Yeah. He hangs Ooh, it a little bit much. of shoulder there, but I don't yeah. think that affected anything. Kind of wanted that throw too badly. You could tell he was a little, he looked about 10, 15 yards out of his range where he released it from. I mean, you know, you got to really get under that. Who's that with the disc right now? Uh, is that Cahill? Is it number 10, Robbie Cahill? Yep. Yeah, I think so. I think that was. That's Jit, another uh, Stanford guy. I think he won with Stanford when they won College Nationals finally. Nice guy. No, that was, uh, well, anyway. That wasn't Cahill? We'll see. Moving the disc. It's like more of a horizontal Nick stack. Nick again. Handler, number 11. Okay. It might have been 80. Is that possible? No, it's not possible. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Taylor Casino. I think so. Let's see if we have any comments Had online. a little turnover there. Not quite sure how that happened. Looked like uh, I turfed it. It was a yeah, turf just, throw. Just throw away. Yeah. Ooh, nice bid. Nice bid. From sure, Woody. 
Uh, yeah, Moses with the disc. Looking for Fleming up the line. Uh, let's see. Fleming, as pointed out by someone online, usually plays D, so it's kind of weird to see him on the O-line. Uh, but oh. uh, he is a veteran. Inside Ooh, out break there. I think he just got it. B stock. Looking for Rifkin deep. Pick call. So what does this mean for UPA Nationals? That's the real question. USA Ultimate Nationals coming up in the fall. It's really hard to tell. Um, you know, these guys are going to have different players when they go back to the States, you know. Yeah. Uh, I talked to a number of teams. Chad Larson Experience was telling me they had... Oh. Uh, Rose, couldn't, couldn't Moses, get can you get that? Chad Larson Experience was telling me, Bryn, they have something like five or six of their D-line starters weren't here at Worlds because they couldn't make it afford it or they couldn't find the time to get away from Puts work. Okay, here's the jump Love ball. It. It's going to go to Revolver. Oh, oh, but he doesn't pull it down. Mark Sherwood had that. Wasn't too floaty. He should have got that. It was a little bit... Uh, yeah, I think the energy's a little flat here. I agree. They're, they're, they're getting a little tired and, yeah. and putting it up a little soon. I think we'll both see. teams are like, you know what? <laughs> it's time to drink some beer. Oh, I, I do not think that they think that, but... I think that. I think I'm going right. to ask that question to Mike Payne after the game. I'm yeah. going to be like, Mike, uh, your team looked like they wanted to drink some beer at around 15-11. <laughs> what, what, what do you think? I think he'll react uh, unfavorably <laughs> to that suggestion. So, Brian, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest that you ask that question. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's okay, here's a big look deep if he wants it. No, they're no, falling into side to chill out. too far a already bit. for yeah. that. There's flying. Now, now he's going to put it. Now. Nope. But we shouldn't, um, in a way, I'm surprised. Oh, Throws it away. Hmm. They are. They, I, I think they are tired. I was foul. Okay, makes a little more sense. And it's so tired that we're not even getting comments online anymore. All those wonderful discussion about jam and. What's revolver. this? Uh, the disc is still over there. Has um, has stopped. What is this? Show my sandblast. Chicago oh. Beach Ultimate. It looks like a. Looks like yeah, a. We'll do this. Chicago. I think yeah, that's a turn. I guess they discussed that. Good call by Sakai to let that go. Chicago Beach Ultimate. All right. <laughs> Get a little props to, uh, to Twirly. Okay, so. Yeah, I guess that is a turn, huh? Revolvers. Let that go, and might have been a stall call, actually, Brian. That might have been it. Might have been. And Jit with the disc. And works it up to much of, much of this. Hand there. Oh, Whoa, nice Whoa, grab nice by there. Revolver. There's, ah, Mark gets that one. <laughs> oh, nice. He's oh, push. For it. It's a foul. It's a foul on Revolver. Uh, down the field there, just to push off. Accidental, really, more than anything else. But uh, two players ran into each other, and uh, there's a call. So this should could be back to number 14 there. That's Mark Sherwood. No, that's number 11, Nick Handler. Okay. Or is that 14, Mark Sherwood? 14 marks are no, kind of Another Stanford player. A little bit of a longer point out there right now. That's what we call hell points. Uh, this is it to Taylor. He huh. won nationals. Uh, he, won he won club nationals when he was 19 years old. <laughs> wow. <laughs> in the year 2000, Taylor did. He was like a sophomore in college. Oh, wow. He's got nothing. Oh, Jit saves him at the last minute. Sakai's playing hard D despite the length of the point. A little, nope, couldn't get that off either. Foul call. You know, honestly, Brent, if Sakai scores this point, they got, they got something. 15-12, I mean, I mean, maybe they have something. <laughs> I don't know. I can't, it's, can't well, really it's tell what's going on. If, if they got any revolver, energy revolve, left. Revolver st scored four in a row earlier. I think that was four in a row? It was, yeah. It was, I yeah, it was yeah. four. Oh. Another foul. Yeah. It was uh, Sakai was receiving at oh, they're, sixes. Oh, they're going to call that turn. Yes, yes. And then they so it was three in a row. Three in a row. And then it became nine six. Nice D by, by Mike Caldwell there. But it was three break. It was three D. <laughs> three straight Ds in a row. Oh. And he milked it for the uh, score. Uh, Caldwell's all over the place, man. That Mohawk's doing him well. He's very. Uh, he's had a strong effect on this game. He's been a pretty big player for those guys for a while now in Sakai. He's one of the three uh, longest tenured Sakai players. Uh, Andrew Fleming, Ben Wiggins, Mike Caldwell. Davey Stock's been there for a while too, but those three guys, uh, and you know, 
when you talk about the Sockeye uh, teams that I know, all those guys are going. So Wiggins, you know, joined in 2002 maybe. So, yeah, he wasn't kidding about, you know, a turnover on this team. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone's getting a little love on the sideline. Don't even know they're on camera. I really do like this this broadcast. I got to say, this these cameramen are having a good time on here. <laughs> She's like, every time I pick my nose, they find it, they find us out here. And every time Bryn's feeling his nipple, they, they catch that, too. <laughs> and every time Caldwell spits some water on the ground. <laughs> such a such a game of energy. I mean, who, who you see what it's like out here, energy? by the way, on the stands? It's packed. I mean, there's people standing everywhere trying to find I mean there's plenty of seats on the other side because it's burning hot and no one wants to go over there beautiful pull there nice pull indoor nice pull on the very back of the end zone there the revolver is moving it up Huck yeah, he, he even got fouled on the mark it's going to come back whatever Three happens Sockeye it doesn't even players. matter what happens it's going back it's all that happened and they're calling that it was a foul yeah Garcia after he threw it stood there <laughs> like yes this is my spot <laughs> Uh, I mean, he, you know, he could go that way through, through the body. So, but um, if you make contact with the, with the limbs, it's a foul on the defender. Um, yeah, so uncontested foul. Revolver will on set up again. Skippy, I think. Yeah, Skippy Matsu. It's a uh, backhand for us. Looking for, oh, nice bid there. Nice bid, but let me just sneak a to it. Oh, sneaks it into bow. Revolver oh, to get space pulling right in two to let one go deep. Then they all recycle back to the to the horizontal Bo with stack. with all the room he wants. Again, horizontal stack. One Great looks deep. Alien, one huh? comes in. Cycle it back around. Reset. Now two two go in. One's going to go out. That reset the bogus? and he pulls it up. It's going to go a little too far. And he gets Ooh. it. Way to make me look bad. I approve. 100% approve. A great layup by Bart Watson. He tracks that disc. It's flying in low. It's flying in fast. Look at that speed. Look at the closing speed he comes in on there. He looked darn Zipperstein-like. Wow. It's nice. You see, I don't see how he could get that. And then he goes and gets it. Yeah, he was tracking in there. I thought the disc was going to get pushed down more, you know. But, um, and I, I misjudged his uh, speed and the angle. And, um, but all props to Bart Watson. Great play. Do you want sugar in your coffee? <laughs> I'm okay, but thanks for the coffee. Yeah. We've been up since 6.30 a.m., 7 a.m. I don't know what time you... Uh, maybe just to say it's the fourth game that we've called in uh, yeah. 24 hours. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was going to go to the party last night, and it was impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely impossible. I felt like... I feel like I'm one of the players. <laughs> <laughs> well... Well, it's been really fun here, but uh, and it's very I want hot a out of the booth. I want a bronze medal or a. I think they're buying the beers for us. I think that's the uh, way it works. Where? Uh oh. Do we have to start talking about beer again? Get me started, Bren. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sixteen twelve. Here's Mac with the pull. This is game point. Game point for Revolver. They've slowly body punched Sockeye to the point where I don't know what they've got left, but we'll find out. Again. Sockeye setting up for the deep throw. I'll tell you, Wiggins told me before this game, he said, we're playing with house money. Okay, that's a great look. That's a great throw. Oh, oh even that way. Uh, Absolutely. Money. I hope some photographers got a shot of that from the outside. Coming in from the outside, I think he hit that with his right hand. Can we going see who out. that was? I have was that, number 28, I think. Yeah, it looked like 68, but there's no 68. Here Marty we go. Cochran? Here's the replay. We'll see how high off the ground he gets. Oosh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think that you're right, Martin Cochran, who used to play with Seattle. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, oh, oh, and it was right in his, it looked like that was right between his. Yeah. Just didn't get a tough read on. He was going to go left or right hand, and he went with both hands, hoping it would stick in one or the other, and it went through the two of them. There's Can't eight. blame him. So um, Ben was telling me before the game, and he said, listen, you know, we came to Worlds with a number of goals. You know, one was to... Let me make sure I get my quote right, but um, 
One was to, uh, you know, play together as a team, concentrate at the highest level, and, uh, and, be, and be relaxed. Hang on, let me get this correct. It's a hard mark there. Saka's got the disc. S swinging it around. They're in a mostly vertical stack down the field. Mostly, uh, oh, the, the mark looks to be more of a backhand. Quick foul there. Straight up vertical stack in this. Downfield. Sakai's looking, little forehand set up. Oh, he had him deep, but he comes back anyway. Flies up, pulls it down. Quick throw to the center. Oh. And puts it in. Thought I was going to scuba that for a second. Good point. So that was the that was 100 minutes. We'll see a replay of that. Uh, the last little putting that in there. Somebody come along. It's really hard to stop. Hard to at that at the end zone right like that. So we're out of regular time. Uh, so the game is officially time capped. The score is 13-16. So I believe it is unless the the game is to 17 unless uh, unless uh, Sakai catches up and makes it closer. If I'm not mistaken. Is that right? I don't have an answer for you. The game's <laughs> to 17. It's I think it's uh, it's still game. It's game point. It's always going to be game to 17, and then it's a matter of whether that you know add two comes into effect. But it's so rare to see that these days. It used to be stan the uh, you know standard that you'd get to the plus two, but it's so rare. Well, we'll see. Uh, see. They're going to announce it now. Okay. So it's an add two. Revolver is going to try to end it right here, and they'll have an opportunity. So we just heard the announcement. Um, you know, if it's tied at 16s, it's a game to 18. So uh, so it's max cap at 18. It's going to go out of bounds. It's too bad for uh, Sakai. They could have used that. That could be the game right there, to be honest with you. You pull out of bounds at a position like this, give that much field position. Uh, that's not what you need. He, but you, you gotta say you got to go for it. I mean, look, you know, you want to pin him back down there. So I know, but there's such know. a such a it's such a blow. Look lose at the that distance much. this I mean, guy is walking up the field, man. That's if you if 40 you, yards. Yeah, I, I think. <laughs> anyway, there's Rob Barber set setting up, up horizontal. So he's coming back. This is at the bow, who's just open all day underneath. So anyway, what Wiggins literally said was, "We're on the bonus level of Big Buck Hunter right now." <laughs> he said like. <laughs> We're shooting bats or something like that. Okay. So we came to this tournament to play together as a team and play the best that we can. Anything other than that is bonus. Revolver, so, uh, Revolver is uh, just Revolver a throw away to, from the... About and to get to the highest level. There of it is. Runner, and there it is. Game winning champions. Revolver from San Francisco, Bay Area, California. Robbie yes, Cahill punches it in to number six. And here it is. That's Josh Wiseman. There it is. Unbelievable. Great game for Vava. They just kept on the gas. Uh, you know what? They just they had control of that game. You know, ever since they took that three-goal run at the half, they never gave it up in the second half. Never gave it up from one bit. They earned that win, and they deserve every bit of it here. Great game played by Vava. Great, exciting run by Sakai. They give a lot to the fans to, to really appreciate here in, um, in Prague. Some really great, great international competition. Some really... Some pretty plays, some really pretty uh, D's and, and lays and, and, and people laying out there. Not the, not the finish that Saka I hope for, of course, especially uh, four point in four-point deficit, 17-13, the final score. Uh, but a pretty good game. You know, they're not going to cry about it. I think, uh, I think Saka, like I said, was happy with what they uh, succeeded in doing here. Uh, there you see uh, Bo and Mac, Colorado, and all their boys. Uh, you know, they earned this W. Good for Revolver. Mike Payne's got himself together. Good good group of guys. They came to this tournament with a great game plan. And uh, that wraps up all of uh, the worlds do here. Do we get to do an, uh, we'll see if we get to do an interview? Yeah, we'll try to get down on the field for you yeah. and do a post game with, uh, you know, talk to some of these guys. Traditionally, you'll see the spirit uh, 
Okay. Yeah, so we can, a uh, couple more words here, and then we'll, we can go down on the field right. and get an interview. Try to get an interview with uh, some of these guys down for both teams. Uh, you know, they're going to do their little spirit huddle, and uh, we'll talk about how much fun they had playing together. This is a common thing you see in Europe. You know, we don't see that in the States. Really? With the circle up after the game. Yeah, it's just gotten out at all. <laughs> really? No, we only do that in Europe. Huh. Interesting. Uh, uh, the, the circle up after the game. Maybe you'll see it at Potlatch or something, but rarely even there. Maybe you'll do a little games, take pictures, mm -hmm. do the handshake line, but the circle, the spirit circle after the game? No. I don't know. I guess you see it in juniors. Maybe I'm just talking out my, uh, talking my butt, oh. but it's not not that common. Finisher. You see it in juniors and you see it in international, and that's about, that's about huh. it. So they'll take a few minutes to do that. Uh, sure, it's pretty soon we'll have the highlight reel from the second uh, half going. It's quite a... Uh, Again, the st field here was the stands here were absolutely packed. I don't think I've uh, certainly never seen a crowd of this size in uh, in Ultimate in the in the Czech Republic. <laughs> but, uh, a lot of players, a lot of people here who are not uh, today from the general public, actually not players. They did some they did some pretty reasonable amount of advertising. I don't know how much of it got outside of the Czech Republic, but. Uh, there was there was an advertising campaign and a lot of people showed up to see this game and to see what it what it's all about. You can see there on the left the spirit huddle and people this is just a small fraction of the people that are here. Uh, I should well, I'm Bryn Perkins, uh, American Ultimate Player who lives in Prague, <laughs> sitting with Tony Leonardo, and uh, we will are going to cut to uh, commercials and. Uh, Playback, and we will see you down on the field. We'll, we'll try to interview a few players uh, from Sockeye. We don't have it right here. We left it somewhere. Right now, and I mean this as a challenge, we, I think, have done our part in our reign to try to spread that. And it is now on you. And you're welcome for making it not on chain. Yes. So let me say this from the bottom of my heart. Congratulations. You are among players and teammates. I look forward to beating you and losing to you in the future. And please accept my challenge. Make this game stronger because you are the champions. Congratulations. We lost every single time. Uh, we got close a few times, and I remember Ben saying at one point two years ago, he's saying, you guys are getting better and better, and one of these days you guys are going to beat us. And so finally, finally we've gotten there. We know you again. So you look around, uh, you guys have definitely reloaded from, uh, from last year, a lot of, lot of young players, and uh, it's, it's pretty impressive to see what you guys did, did this tournament. I didn't expect both even to beat Ironside, let alone knockout chain. Uh, so we thank you for that. Uh, you guys had an awesome tournament. You're always fun to play against. And congratulations.
Playoff KB Extra Ligi v rugby. Finále regionální pokrové ligy. Mistrovství světa v hokejbou mládeže. Mistrovství světa v Ultimate Frisbee. Mistrovství republiky v Ultimate Frisbee. 17. mistrovství Evropy v akrobací motorových letounů. Střížna CZ. Vysíláme živě.
this step here. Okay, guys are up. Hey Spencer, Ben Wiggins. Listen, you guys had a real heartfelt game there. Looks like you ran a little bit out of gas in the second half after they, uh, they took that three goal run in the first half. Um, tell me how hard you fought there to try to get this win. As hard as we could. Um, they earned it and you know we gave it everything that we had and um, I imagine that they gave it everything they had and the score I think tells the tale. Ben, uh, I heard a little bit of post game uh, talk to the uh, to the both teams. You said now it's your turn, Revolver. You've got to hold up the the, the banner for international ultimate and spirit and and show what you know ultimate's made up to the world. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that and what you meant by that? Uh, yeah, people ask a lot of the best teams. Um, they ask for practices. They ask for coaches. And we've been, I think, uh, very giving. Uh, so you get a lot of attention from teams around the world. You do, and we're not professionals. Yes, Everybody has right. another job and family, and I think that our team has done a great job of giving back, and we really make that a point of being part of Sakai. Um, and now they're going to have more attention. We're yes. going to keep doing what we do, and we hope they follow our lead like we followed the teams before us. Absolutely. Um, yeah. there's, a, there's a wide world ultimate out there, and people are hungry for what we know. So they're going to keep coming for it, and hopefully Revolver steps up to that challenge. Yeah, great. So, um, listen, you guys are going to see these guys again uh, in the near future, perhaps, you know, in the UPAs and in, uh, you know, regionals. Uh, no, they're not in your region. Are they in your region? They are. Okay, and so uh, what, what, what do you look forward to seeing these guys again? Is it going to be like some kind of fun game, or do you, uh, you know, you know, you're going to give us some competitive juices wrong? You know, I, I can't imagine that this isn't more motivation, uh, more fuel to the fire. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do ourselves, just getting to the track and getting back as far as we get out. Uh, let me ask you just one strategy question here. Um, it seemed like, uh, you know, they were playing you guys kind of like, just kind of, you know, easy. You know, they weren't they weren't jacking it deep. They, they sent Bo under and he had 10, 15 yards every time under and only rarely would he go deep and he was just kind of open all game and that worked for them on offense. Is there something deep defensively you can do differently next time? I'll ask you, Ben. Uh, maybe it looks easy from the stands, but right, uh, we're right. talking about a very good point. Yeah. We're talking about athletes on their team that are college athletes, that are top high school athletes that are coming into the sport. Mm -hmm. This isn't a bunch of hippies throwing a disc around, and the the level of precision and the reaction time is a lot higher than people think. Um, everybody, I'm Go sure. On. Wayne, get back. I'm sure everybody thinks that they can step on the field and guard a Mac Taylor or a Bo because they see it from the stands. We're not running that fast, and. Um, most of the world gave it a shot. I think we're the only team this week that really made them work for every point. And, um, yeah, anybody who wants to bring that challenge, they can go for it. If, uh, yeah, if you want to look at our defense, look at our body of work over the week. And, and I think that it's going to show that you step on the field with us, you work for every inch, no matter what it looks like to the people in the stands. Well said, Ben. Spencer, appreciate your time with us, and look forward to seeing you guys in the future. Thank you, Tony. Thank you.
Yeah. Uh, why don't you hold this? You guys can pass it back. Thanks. Okay. He's strong. He'll hold it. Yeah. Both of them are up. Yep. Testing one, two. Okay, we're live here with the World Champion Revolver 2010 Club Championships. Bart Walton and uh, Bo Kittredge here. Guys, you guys had some fabulous plays, Bart, that, that layout grab at the end. Tell me about that. It was coming in really fast. Uh, yeah, uh, I was glad he put it to speed up. The last one had three Sakai guys around it. Uh, but, yeah, uh, felt good. Body's been, our D's been doing a great job all week, so our team was really fresh. Still had the legs to go get it. Uh, felt, felt good. Um, Bo, tell me, uh, in the, in the uh, first half, you guys went on a three-point run on D at sixes to really kind of like, and it kept the lead up since then. What was the key to that? You got a big block in, in, in one of those possessions, I believe. Uh, I think it's I think kind of Bart said. We had our D team playing most of the weekend, so we were able to put our fresh show players on defense. We were able to run hard, and then they also ran hard, and then everyone was running hard, and then it was great. Lots of hard running. Lots of hard running. Awesome. Bart, you, you played with Jam for a while. People have been talking about this online. Is this your first or second year with Revolver now? This is my first year with Revolver. Uh, Jam parted ways in the offseason, a lot of uh, babies and retirements and whatnot. And uh, obviously, we knew these Revolver guys had some talent, so a couple of us uh, made the switch. How's it been fitting in with uh, another Bay Area team and getting to the same space in terms of the championship round here with another Bay Area team? Uh, it's been wonderful. I mean, it's a, it's a great experience. A lot of these are, are guys who I've seen you know, grow up in Ultimate, uh, a lot of Stanford guys who I've watched play. Yeah. Uh, it's my alma mater. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of guys like Bo who I've played with on other teams before, either fun tournaments like Paganello or with Team USA. Uh, so it's been great. And, and, I mean, the Revolver ethos is very welcoming and, and inclusive. So I think it's been great for, for them uh, bringing us into the team. You guys lost a tough uh, finals last year against Chain Lightning and UPAs. How does it feel? How are you guys looking to pull the double here? It's not an easy task. Uh, you got to talk to him about that. I was Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bo, going out there, Bo. Uh, yeah, it is going to be tough. I mean, it's going to be hard to uh, take off time and then also get back in shape in like two yeah. weeks. So yeah. train again. It's definitely going to be a hard mountain to climb. But we love mountains, especially little sandy ones that are next to the beach that uh -huh. we run up and down and look at the sunset and hold. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Mike Scott, you're running up and down some sand hills, I yeah, take it. sand hills. There's been a sand dune or two. All right. Well, hey, listen, guys, I want to say it's a very entertaining game. Great tournament you guys had. Uh, congratulations. Undefeated throughout. And uh, you earned it. 2010 champion. So congratulations Thanks, once again. And ladies, if you're still watching, I hope 5 a.m. wasn't too early. <laughs> I love all of you. <laughs> cool. Thanks, guys. Catch you next time. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, Tony Leonardo with Bryn Perkins, and uh, we're just going to give you our highlights of the tournament. Bryn, what, uh, let's start with uh, your thoughts of you know, this uh, the tournament in general uh, from a person who's been living in Prague for the last 10 years. What's it like having all these Frisbee players come to town? It's pretty amazing being the center of the Frisbee world for an entire week, uh -huh. seeing, seeing names and, and, and teams that you've been reading about and seeing pictures of playing on the home fields. It's really exciting for us, and I know the entire Czech Frisbee community was so excited for, about it. Um, they've been working, uh, they started planning this tournament a uh, year and a half ago or something. A year and a half? Yeah, I mean, it, it, they put a lot of time into it. I know there were uh, some things didn't work out quite as well. Uh, a little bit of the two separate big fields. Yeah, the, the separate location. field space. But I got to say, I really appreciate all the wonderful jobs that the Czech um, supporters have done. The world staff here has been excellent. They've been everywhere. And to, put, to host a large tournament like this, they've just done a wonderful job. The city is beautiful, and everyone's been super friendly. So congrats to you, everyone here. Thanks. It's, we've gotten so much positive feedback. A lot of people really liked the fact they could go hang out in Prague when they weren't playing games, yeah. which is you know, obviously you can only do here. But uh, seven, over 700 games, uh, I think 3,500 players, something like that. Uh, it's, it's quite a, it's an amazing thing to be part of. Just in watching it all, it's been a lot of fun. And, and seeing this high-level ultimate, how does it feel? Like we saw the broadcast with Stisna here, and you know, it was just absolutely beautiful. Do you think this could be a spectator sport one day? I think so. Um, I, I think that the women, in my opinion, the women's game today was the, one of the most exciting games I've ever seen. Uh -huh. And uh, 
the men's game was extremely exciting too. But there was uh, there were more different more it was more dynamism, different kinds of play right. in the in the women's game that made it particularly exciting. <laughs> uh, what about you? Oh, you know, this, was, this the way this was telecast with the multiple camera angles, the instant replay, we have some commentators, and this beautiful stadium and field space and everything Prague's done for this tournament. Um, I can see people getting excited about this sport, yeah. I mean, you know, we have a long way to go, but, um, you know, the future's not so far away, perhaps. Uh, the World Flying Disc Federation had a meeting here, and a lot of their future is planned on, is, is on, they're, they're looking to develop this sport more around the world, so... Hopefully we'll see more, more international tournaments like this. I mean, as big as this, and including more and more different countries. It's been a great time, Bryn. I had a great time in the broadcast booth with you. Hopefully, uh, you know, people will be able to tune in the broadcast later on. And the Vuvuzelas, they come and they go. Uh, World Cup soccer tomorrow for the rest of the fans. And um, gosh, anything else? I had a really good time, too. Thank you to everyone out there for watching. Uh, let's go ahead and send your comments to to Tony's uh, blog. Send them to Bryn Perkins at Prague.com. No. Uh, uh, you can Google uh, Tony Leonardo and probably find his blog. Uh, uh, thank you for watching. It's been a great time. And uh, that'll do it. Uh, I think that'll do it for us here. At the I guess four years from now is the next time you might see us at the World Club Championships. So see you then.
è la nostra nuova maglietta da festa. L'ho anche messa per dormire una sera, lavala perché... Però dai, noi, mezzo, noi non siamo, cioè di solito siamo, siamo tutto abbastanza presto, mezzanotte sicuramente ci siamo. Domani non so neanche a che ora, perché non riesco a pensare. Ah, okay. Però domani sera sono in Italia, a Milano arrivo e dopo... Noi abbiamo internet solo nella lobby dell'albergo, non andava niente, solo lì non è stato il giorno.